Are you ready to become a JavaScript master? Join us on an exciting journey of discovery with JavaScript Mastery. Build 10 real-world applications from scratch. In this comprehensive course, you'll not only learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but also create practical projects that will sharpen your skills. Throughout this course, we'll dive into 10 fascinating projects that will challenge and inspire you. We'll start by building a dynamic to-do list application, where you can manage tasks effortlessly. Then we'll move on to notes taking, allowing you to organize your thoughts seamlessly. Next, we'll explore the world of security with a password strength checker that evaluates the robustness of your passwords. And for those times when you need a secure password on the fly, we'll create a random password generator. As we progress, we'll tackle practical problems with an age calculator that accurately determines someone's age. And for those looking to generate random text, we'll build a random paragraph generator that will assist you creatively. Want to explore the musical side of JavaScript? We'll construct a digital piano application, allowing you to play melodies with just a few lines of code. And for a fun twist, we'll create an interactive experience with click to change BG color, where you can switch the background color at the click of a button. Additionally, we'll delve into the world of colors with a hex color generator, giving you endless possibilities for vibrant palettes. And finally, we'll develop a vowel counter application that counts the number of vowels in a given text. By the end of this course, you'll have gained the skills and confidence to create 10 real-world applications from scratch. Join us on this exciting journey and unlock the full potential of JavaScript. Enroll now and start your JavaScript mastery today. Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the to-do list application. So this is the final application that we are going to build in this whole module. So let us see the working of this particular application. If I enter here a task like first task, if I click on this enter, then you can see the first task is now appearing in a form of list. So if I click on this particular first task, either you can see it's actually marked and there is a strike is appearing inside this particular text. And you can also see that this is the cross button is also appearing. So if I enter here another task like drink water. Okay, so if I enter again add here, then you can see this particular task is actually added to the list. So if I click on this one also, then you can see the task is marked completed. If you actually now drink the water, means the task is not completed yet. Then if you again click it, then it is actually unmarked or you can say that the unchecked. If I click on this cross button, so it's going to delete the task from the list. Also, when you refresh the page, you can see this task is still appearing. This is because the project is also support the local storage. So we, are, so we are going to store this list inside the local storage as well. So if I enter here another task like third task, if I enter here and like again, if I enter here at food, eat food, eat foods, and if I enter and if I press the refresh, then you can see the task which is marked completed. It's actually appearing in the marked way, means the check, and the task which is unchecked is appearing like this. So if I click it here, then this task is also marked. If I again refresh, then so if I want to delete the task, you can simply click on this cross element to delete the task, or even we can delete the checked task as well. Okay, so this is the final application that we are going to build in this whole module. So by the end of this module, you will have a complete knowledge about how to use the local storage, how to create this nice looking card like effect and also add this linear background color. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of this to-do list application. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of this to-do list application. So you can see I have already created three files inside the Visual Studio code. So you can see that I have created the index.html file, style.css and script.js file. And inside of this index.html, I have added the boilerplate code that is the basic HTML code structure in which I have linked my CSS file which is a style.css and also I have linked my javascript file which is script.js file. Now before moving forward we need to actually get the images because right now we have three images this image and then once we add the task then we have this circle image which is unchecked and when we tap on the task means when we click on the task then we have this checked image. So total we have three images for this project. 
So you have to download the resources section of this particular project. The folder that you will get, you have to download this particular resources of the project, which is a project manager resource to do guest application. Once you download this particular RAR file, then you have to extract it and you will get this images folder. Inside of this images folder, you can see that there are three images present. The first is checked, the second is notes and the third is unchecked image file. Now in order to use these images inside the project of to-do list application, you have to import these images inside the Visual Studio code. So I'm coming back to my Visual Studio code again. So I'm going to click on this explorer tab. So here you can see I have created all of these three files inside of this particular directory of name project one to-do list application. So I'm going to right click on this project directory and just click on this new folder. And here I'm going to name my folder as images. Once I did that, I'm just going to right click on it and again I'm going to click on this reveal in file explorer. So you can see now we are inside this particular image directory. So I'm going to just simply open this directory and keep this window as like this, this means the explorer. And again I'm going to select the images directory where I have extracted my archive, which is a RAR file. So I'm going to select all of these images, right click it. Click on this cut operation. After doing the cut, then I'm going to click on this project one to do list application directory and just simply right click it and click on the paste. Then you can see all of these Im images are now actually moved to this directory. Then I'm going to close this window. And if I just click on these images, then you can see all of these three images now appearing inside our Visual Studio code. Okay. So these are the three images we are going to use for this project. Then I'm also going to close this particular window. I'm going to click on this explorer tab so that you can see everything more clearly. Now here I'm going to add the one H2 element. So I'm going to write here a text which is called to do application. So I can say that it to do list application. Okay. So this will be the heading tag for the our application. So I'm going to launch this application into my browser. So before that I need to change the little bit about my Visual Studio window. So I'm going to just simply make it a little bit smaller so that we can see this go live server plugin. Okay. So once I click on this first and dispose it and click on this go live server plugin, then you can see now our application is launched and you can see the heading to do list application. So if I click on this window tab of the visual studio, then we, I can switch between these windows. So that is why I actually set it my viewport like this. So if I click on this, this white bar then I actually move to my browser and if I click on this black one which is my Visual Studio Code. So I can switch between these two windows very easily and I can show you the output as well. Because if I just simply minimize this into like this and add the window like this one then it's not going to work properly because you are not able to see the code more clearly. So that is the reason I prefer this approach. Okay so this will be the entire approach I will be using inside this particular course. And before because most of the application are small applications so they are not going to take up the whole space of the browser okay so after doing this we need to first create this particular portion of the project we are going to create the heading and then we need to place the image and also we need to wrap this all content inside this particular container or you can say that the to do app container so i'm going to first here type the one division tag so i'm going to use the container shortcut which is a emit abbreviation shortcut so if I press the tab key, then you can see our container is created of div tag. So once I did that, then inside of this div container, I'm going to add another div which is to do app. If I press the tab key, then you can see this is our to do app container. And inside of that, we need to place the h2 element. So this will be our h2 element. And I have already created the h2 element. So I'm going to copy this h2 element from here, simply cut it and paste it here. So I'm going to simply here type it to do list, just remove the application text. And inside of this h2 element, I'm going to place the img tag, which is our img src. So the src, we need to set it like images. So inside of the images, we have our to do list, which is our notes png, which is our to do list logo. So if I did that, then you can see inside the browser. This image is like appearing like whole bigger, but we are going to set it with the use of the CSS. But before going back to the CSS, I'm going to first completely add all the HTML elements that we need to tile. Okay. So after doing this H2, I'm going to add here uh, another div, which is for the row. So it's going to like dot row. 
now this row is actually denotes this particular input type and this button so it is actually a one row so they are appearing in a single row okay so that is why we have added this particular div here if i press the enter key and inside of this row we need to create the one input type so input type is going to be text and then we need to specify the id now this id is going to be fetched inside the java script so that is why i'm going to name the id as input type box and then we need to add the placeholder text so the placeholder text i'm going to add here enter your text here okay so this will be the placeholder text browser window so if i have again coming back to the chrome so you can see now first we need to refresh the visual studio control save it and again coming back to the then you can see this particular input type is now appearing inside the browser coming back to the visual studio code again then we need to add the button so this will be our button so inside of this button we need to add a one on click event so i'm going to add the on click event this on click event is like our to do function so i'm going to type it here add task so this will be the function which will be created inside the javascript now in between this button tag we need to add the text so it's going to be like add so this will be the row of the input type and the button that will denote the this particular style of the css means that will denote the, these two elements and the next part we need to add the ul part so that we can create this particular list and we are going to update this list with the use of dom so this is actually a part of this particular to do app because the main container is different and this is the to do app this to do app is a container which is this white portion you can see right now this is a main to do app container so instead of this to do app division we need to place the ul element so this is the ul element and we need to specify the id to this ul element so the id i am going to give it as list container okay so after adding the list container i am going to add here a one li and the li and i am going to add the class as checked so this will be the checked because later on we need to use the checked image that is this one checked image which will be used inside of this particular list element okay and then we also need to use the unchecked image for the unchecked list element so i'm going to add the basic style once we add these elements with the use of the javascript dom then we need to provide the proper style to these particular elements of the html so coming back to the end of this particular list and here i will be adding the another text which is task one then control save it and coming back to the google chrome browser then you can see this particular task is appearing although the first one is empty because we have not added any text in between these two tags so i'm going to add here a task zero just for the demonstration purpose so you can see now the task zero and task one is now visible to the screen so that's marks the completion of the code for the html part of this particular project if you want to add more html elements then we can come back to this particular index.html to add the other html element so our next step is to start with the css part of this to do list application so our next step is to start with the css part of this to do list application so for that we need to use the style.css file so inside of this style.css file first i am going to use the universal selector and inside this universal selector first we need to change the margin property so margin is going to be zero then the padding is also zero then we need to use the box sizing so box sizing is like our border box and then we need to use the font family so font family is going to be like our arial so once i did that and control save it then you can see the font is now changed now the first thing is we need to actually like resize this image and also this to do list element but, but first we need to actually style these all elements in the center of the screen so to do that we need to first select the container element means the container class of the this particular div element so i'm going to copy the class name container and coming back to the style.css pressing the dot key and pasting the name of the class then starting the block of the container code so the first property that we need to use inside this container is the width property so the width is like 100 percent and the second property that we need to add inside the container is the min height property 
not min width is going to be like min height so minimum height we are going to specify here 100 vh and after that we need to use the background so that we can add the linear gradient color so we need to use this linear not a o level linear gradient this is for the opera i just want to remove this linear gradient and instead of that first we need to specify the degree so it is going to be 185 degree and the color code that i will be using here is like our 3b3 ee and 3 this will be the color which is a blue color and then the second color we need to use because the gradient is combined with two colors then we will get the gradient result is like 045 and 610 so this will be the green color if i control save it then you can see inside the browser we have this nice little gradient effect to the background of our to do list application project coming back to the visual studio code again and the last property inside of this we need to add the padding so padding from all side we are going to add like 10 pixel control save it then you can see now this is there is a padding in the all side of the browser window is this container because our main container if i inspect the element and click on it if i click on this then you can see this is the main container if i select it this is the main container this one is which is our list container this one is our main container so everything is actually present inside the main container so our next step is to add the style code for this to do so that we can create this card like effect okay so for that we need to come in back to the visual studio code and here inside of this first we need to add the html element class which is the to do app class so i'm going to copy this here and pressing the dot key and then pressing the pasting the name of the class which is to do app so for the first thing we need to add inside the to do app is the width property so again we need to add the width to 100% or i can just simply remove the width from the container if i remove the width from the container and coming back to the chrome browser and, and just closing this inspect element window then you can see nothing is changed because i want to showcase the container property so now the internal child of the container is actually also occupying the 100 percent width so that is why i actually remove the width property from this container then next we need to add the max width property so the maximum width is going to like 545 5 pixel control save it coming back to browser then you can see now they are actually shrinked a little bit like they are now appearing one after the other like a columnar structure okay and after that we need to add the background color so background color is like a pure white which is hashtag three times f means the hash character if i control save it then you can see there is a background to this particular to do app container now we need to style this container at the center of the screen so for that we need to add the more css code inside this to do app class selector now the next property we need to add is the margin property so margin property from top and bottom is going to be like 100 pixel and then from left and right is going to be like auto because we have used here a width and max width property so if i control save it and coming back to the chrome browser you can see now our particular to do app container is now perfectly at the center of the screen so again coming back to the visual studio code here after that we need to add the padding so right now you can see if i just uh, come back to the browser they are now appearing at the edge of this particular container so we want some internal spacing between the edge of this element means this container and the element so for that we need to use the padding property so here first i'm going to add the 40 pixel padding then 30 pixel and after that we need to add here a 70 pixel if i control save it then you can see the result is like looking great okay and after that we need to add a one more property which is the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel if i control save it then you can see we have this nice rounded border and after that we need to add the code for this to do app h2 element and for the image so first i'm going to copy this class selector name here again pasting it here and inside of that i will be adding an h2 because first we are going to provide the style for the h2 element so first we need to change the color of the h2 element so it's going to be like hashtag 002765 and then we need to add the display property so display is going to be like flex not inline it's going to be flex property if i control save it 
and coming back to the Chrome browser, then you can see they are now appearing in a single row. And also the color of this to-do list text is also changed, which is a H2 element. Coming back to the Visual Studio Code again. So here we are going to add some more properties. So we need to align the items at center. If I do that and control save it, then you can see now to-do list is appearing in the center of this particular element. Okay. At the center of this container. Okay. And coming back to the Visual Studio Code again here. And again, I'm going to add the margin bottom property. So margin bottom is going to like 30 pixel so that there is a space between this input type and this particular heading and the image. Okay, so coming back to the Visual Studio Code. So that's for the code for the H2 element. Again, I'm going to copy this H2 element selector, also the class name selector. And then we need to here select the image. And inside of the, we need to start the block of the code for this particular to do H2 image selector and here first we need to add the width property so i'm going to add the width like 35 pixel control save it then you can see now our project is taking the space now you can see there is a like these two are actually overlapping each other or you can say that they are very close to each other so we need to provide some spacing between these two so for that we need to add the margin property so i'm going to here again coming back to the visual studio code adding the margin left property so margin left is going to be like 10 pixel. Control save it. Then you can see there is a margin between these two elements. Okay, so you can see now the looks like the final product that we are actually want to build. So next step is we need to add the hover effect to this container so that there should be a black box shadow. So when we hover over it, then there is a black shadow is appearing to give like a 3D effect to this particular card. So for that, coming back to the Visual Studio Code again, and I'm going to just remove these extra spacing from here. And for that, we need to provide the style for the row element. So which is this particular row. But before that, we need to add the hover effect to the to-do app because the next element that we need to style is the input type button and this row. So I'm going to copy this class name again and coming back to the style.css, pressing the dot key, pasting the name of the selector. And inside of that, First, we need to add the hover sudo class element. So at the end of this app text, pressing the colon, then typing the hover. And instead of that, we need to provide the box shadow. So box shadow is a property that is used to provide the shadow to the containers or the elements. So I'm going to here one pixel, two pixel, then again I will be using here two pixel and then the three pixel. Then I will be using the RGBA. So it is going to be like zero or I can use the a uh, short hand property for the color because it is going to work well. So it is going to be like black. If I control save it and coming back to the Chrome browser, then if I hover over it, then you can see now there is a 3D effect to this particular to do app container. So now I'm going to explain the elements. So this is the main container. So this main container is basically used to wrap all the elements. Okay. So, and this particular to-do container is used to wrap all of these elements. So this will be the main card-like effect and all this container is used to actually provide the element at the center of the screen. So next step is we need to add the code for this row container. So coming back to the style.css file. So when pressing the dot key and then pressing, pasting the name of the class so that it will become a class selector of row. Now before adding the code inside this row selector, first I need to remove this to do app width property because right now we have used the max width property. So there is no need to use this width property 100%. So if I remove it and control save it, then you can see nothing is changed. That is because this property is unnecessary and doesn't actually working because the max width property overriding the width property. Okay, now coming back to the row selector. So first we need to add the width property to this row as well because right now you can see we need to style these two elements where is our output project this is the project output we need to style these two elements at the single row they are appearing in a single row but we need to change its style and also there is a margin we need to apply between the input type and the ul list element which is the unordered list. 
okay so coming back to the visual studio board actually i have maximized it so i need to adjust the layout like this and click on the visual studio code so the first property we need to apply the flex which is the display property so display is going to be flex once i save it and if i come back then you can see actually this is the output one this will be the maximum where is our chrome one okay this is so you can see now they are apparently if i remove the flex property because i have seen that uh, this will there is a spacing between these two elements so, so once i apply the flex property then you can say they are now actually appearing very close to each other means and coming back to the other property which is align items center so i'm going to quickly type the code and i will be explain the output so justify content is also going to like space between not around it's going to like space between so they are actually going to style at the left and right of the container so this is done with the use of the justify content property which is a space between and after that we need to add the background color so background color is like hashtag efe2e2 so this will be the color so if i control save it then you can see there is a background color to this particular row so after doing this we need to add the border radius property so border radius is going to be like our 10 pixel once i save it then you will see there is a rounded border but right now you cannot see it because the input type and button is now at the edge of these two means the edge of the row container so that is why then we need to increase the padding so padding from left is going to be like 20 pixel so i have increased the padding inside the so you can see from left this is like a rounded looks like a rounded one and also we need to add a margin button property just like i already explained it because this input element and the ul element there is no space between these two so to add the space we need to use the margin button property which is like 25 pixel so if i see the output then you can see there is a space between these two elements so that's the code for the row selector the next thing we need to add the style for the input element so we are going to use the input so this will be our input element because right now we have only one input element that is why i am actually using the tag name selector here so instead of the input first we need to change the is flex property so the flex is going to be like one so if i do that then it's going to occupy the whole space of its container okay and after doing that we need to add the another property which is border is equal to none and also we need to remove the outline of the input type which is also going to be none if i do that then you can see the border and the like its outline is removed next we need to make its background to transparent so we are going to make the background to look like transparent okay so this is the background so the background property is now transparent now it's actually looks quite great enter your text here that's not great and then we need to increase the padding so we are going to increase the padding from all sides is going to like 10 pixel control save it then you can see now it's actually increased its size so if i use the 100 percent viewport of the browser then you can see it's now looking great and after that we need to add a one more property which is the font weight property the value i'm going to specify 14 pixel so you can see now the font weight property is also applied so our next step is to add the style for this button so coming back to the visual studio code so here i'm going to select the button directly with the name of the tag which is a button so instead of that first we need to use the border property so border is going to be like none and also we need to use the outline property so outline is going to be none and after that we need to use the padding so padding from like a top and bottom is going to be like 16 pixel and from left and right is going to be like 15 pixel then we need to use the color property so the color is going to be like hashtag fff which is a white color and then we need to use the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel then cursor is going to be pointer and the last property we need is the border radius property so if i control save it and if i see the output then you can see the button but we need to apply the background color also so the background is going to be like background color is going to like 0 a 9 c 11 which is a nice green color now we need to make the 
border of this button to round so for that we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 10 pixel once i did that then you can see now the styling of these row element is also done so if i see my output application the final application you can see now they are both looks like the same now only difference between these two is like here we have the text enter your text and here we have added the enter your text here okay so this will be the final product version of the application and this will be the application that we are developing in this whole module okay so the next step is we need to add the style for the ul element and also we need to add the hover effect to this button so coming back to the visual studio code copy this button again and pasting it here then closing the module of this button is the block of this button and then i need to add here a background color again and then the color that i'm going to use here hashtag 068 and 051 and also we need to add the pseudo element hover by pressing the colon and then this will be the hover if i coming back to the browser then you can see this particular button has a hover effect and also we have a hover effect on this container which is a to do app container and after that we need to add the style to our ul elements so for that we need to add here ul and then we need to select the li dot checked so checked is like the class name that we have specified here you can see this is the checked name class i'm going to copy this and here i will be pasting the name of the class and also we need to add the style before this checked element so again i'm going to type here ul li dot so here we need to use this pseudo class element which is the before element so inside of that we need to add the check door and checked image assets so for that we need to use the pseudo classes okay so this will be the pseudo class elements and also we need to add the another pseudo class elements by using ul li dot checked and then again we need to use the pseudo class element before okay so these are the three selectors we need to apply for the pseudo elements so the first property we need to apply here a uh, content so content is going to like single quotes which is empty string and then we need to provide the position so position is going to be like absolute so it's going to be absolute okay and also we need to add here height property so height is going to be like 28 pixel if i control save it then you can see nothing is changed so this will be the width and width is going to like 28 pixel again and after that we need to add the border radius so border radius is going to like 50 percent so that it looks like the in a circular form means the image should be displayed in a circle okay and then we need to add the background so background we are going to use here a url function and then we need to provide the path to the image so it's going to like image and then the first image that we is actually unchecked because by default when we launch the application we want to display the unchecked now you can see this is the image is now appearing but the problem is that these are not in a perfect circle the reason for that we need to apply the top and left property and also we need to add a another property which is a background size and background position property so first i'm going to add here a background size property so background size is going to be cover so we have to use here a cover property if i do that then you can see now the images are actually appearing at the center but we want to display these images at here so for that we need to add more style code so here again we need to use here another property which is background position so background position is going to be center okay once i did that then you can see now they are at the center of these particular list elements okay and coming back to there we need to add the top and left property to actually move its from its default to actually move it from the place right now they are actually we want to display this circle at the front of this list element so to move it we need to use the top and left property so that is what i am actually here specifying then we need to use the left property so left is going to be 16 pixel if i control save it coming back to the browser then you can see if i just simply reduce the window size browser then now we can see the actually circle is appearing here now the reason for that this circle is appearing here is because we have used here a absolute property now the absolute property is working for it's actually taking up the its parent position it's going to relate its parent 
So we need to add further more code here. Add the ul then li because we have actually not styled the main root element, which is the uh, root element means here this is the main element for these two child of the list. So we need to provide the style for this ul list as well. So for that we need to add the code inside of it. So the first thing is we need to change the decoration and the before adding the property first I am going to specify the position relative. Once I did that then you can see the problem is fixed. Okay. And also I need to add some property inside it. This particular one. So the first property that we need to add is the list style property which is going to be none. So that the this particular bullets of the list is actually removed. You can see right now. Okay, the bullets is removed. Also, the other property that we need to add is the font size. So font size is going to be like 17 pixel. And then we need to use the padding. So padding is going to be like 12 pixel from left. Then from right is going to be like 8 pixel. Or I can say that the 12 pixel and then the 50 pixel. So this will be the padding. And then we need to use the user select property. So user select is going to be none. And then we need to use the cursor pointer. Okay, once I control save it, then you can see they are looks perfect. And then we need to add the style code for this checked and before checked element. So now we need to add the code inside this ul li.checked and before these two these selectors. So the first we need to add the code inside of this li.checked. So instead of that first we need to specify the color so the color is going to be like hashtag ff55 which is for the dark gray and then we need to add the text decoration which is actually a line through if i control save it then you can see now there is a line is appeared this actually indicates that the task is done or you can say that the task is completed okay and then we need to add the code for inside of this particular ul li dot checked before pseudo class element selector so instead of that, I'm going to use the again color attribute. So the color is going to be like uh, hashtag FF or like 666, which is slightly darker than this previous color. And then we need to add the background image. So background image and then we need to use the URL function. And then here we need to use the images. And then at this point of time, it's going to be checked image. If I control save it, then you can see we have now added the code for the style of the list elements as well so once our task is done then it's going to display this particular style code and once the task is not done then it's going to display this particular style another thing i want to change is actually here the image i need to make the image because we are actually changing the background image if i control save it then all the code of the css part is done guys so our next step is to start with the javascript part of the to do list application So it's time to start with the JavaScript part of the to-do list application project. So for that we need to use the script.js file. So instead of this script.js file, first we need to fetch the elements ID. So the first element ID that we want to fetch is the input type. So the input type we have specified the ID as input box and also we need to fetch the ID of this list container. So I'm going to copy this list container and coming back to my script.js file. So first I'm going to create here a const and here I will be using the list container just removing the hyphen and just using the camel case typing name of the variable then i will be using here a document dot get element by id and inside of that we need to double inside the double quotes we need to paste the id name then i'm going to duplicate this line of code and here i'm going to change the variable name to input box and then inside of that we need to change the id name so at this point of time the id name is input box so coming back to the script.js and i'm going to paste the id name input box now we have actually bind the ui element inside the javascript so we have the access to these two elements inside the javascript then we need to create this add task function i'm going to copy this function and coming back to the javascript file again so here i'm going to type the function keyword then the name of the function then i'm going to start the block of the function Instead of that, first we need to add the condition. So when we click on the button, so if I coming back to the Chrome browser, so when we click on this button, we want to display an alert just like this. You can see enter some data. We want to display this alert. So to do that, 
we need to add the if condition so here first i'm going to type the if and after that here we need to add the input box dot value so not arial vex is like a value then we are going to use a 3 equal to sign and then we need to add error empty string and then we need to start the block of the if and also the else block so here we need to display the alert pop-up box or you can say that the alert pop-up dialog and inside of that we are going to display the message enter some data if i control save it and coming back to the index.html it is already saved coming back to the chrome browser so if i just simply click on this alert then you can see enter some data okay so we need to enter the data if we enter the data then we want to just to append this text inside this list element okay so for that we need to use this else block so making some spaces inside the else block so the first thing is we need to create a variable of so let li is equal to it's going to like document so we need to create the li element so right now i'm going coming back to the index.html and i'm going to just simply make this line of code to comment because we are going to update the list container dynamically through the javascript by using the dom element that is why i actually comment out these two line of code this is we have just used for the css purpose so that we can style and see the output of our style code which is a css style code so I control save the index.html and also coming back to the javascript file which is a script.js inside of that we need to create the element so we are going to use the create element function of tom so we want to create an li element dynamically so inside of the double quotes you need to pass the tag name which is the li and after that once this li is created it's going to assign inside this let variable li so we have we have the access of the html element which is dynamically created and stored inside this li variable so we need to update the li item so we are going to create here li dot update inner html so this is the inner html we are going to set the inner html means the li that is created dynamically we want to set the value so we want to set the value of the input box if it is not empty which we have checked already in the if condition so if it is not empty we want to assign the value of this input box dot value and then we need to terminate this line of code or whether you just simply ignore the terminator once we do that we want to append this li element to the list container because the main list is our ul this is a list container so we want to append this li element to this list container so if i enter here list container dot append child so we are going to use this append child function and then we need to pass the li as an argument to this append child function if i control save it and coming back to the chrome browser again so if i enter here then you can see enter some data if i enter here task like first to do if i simply press the enter key then you can see now the list is created and if i enter here like second to do or i can just simply here second to do if i create then you can see now the list is actually updated but once you can see once we actually edit the task we need to actually remove this text from the input type manually by pressing the backspace key or delete key so in order to remove the text once the element is added we need to actually add a one code inside this particular add function to actually empty the input box value after the end of this else block means you are outside of this if and else block here we need to write a code which is input box dot value is actually we need to set it to empty string so if i control save it and coming back to the chrome browser so if i enter here a value again like a first task if i press the enter key means the add button then you can see now the task is added and also the input type is actually gets empty okay so the next step is we need to actually save these tasks once the we refresh the page so if i refresh the page then you can see this task is gets simply deleted means the washed out it is not saved so for the saving of the task we need to use the local storage of the browser so coming back to the visual studio code so here we need to create a one function so the function then we need to specify the name of the function so it is going to be the save task and then we need to start the body of the function now inside of that first we need to get the reference of the local storage so local storage dot set item so we want to set the item to the local storage so we want to set the data so here we need to specify the key of the storage 
and then we need to specify the value that we want to set to this data key. So this data key is going to hold the list container all of its inner HTML. So if I control save it and if I try to run the application means I control save it and coming back to the browser. Now if I enter here a task here like a, a list of to do so I am going to enter here list 1 to do. So if I click on the add then you can see the list is actually updated. So I am going to open the browser storage. So I am going to press the F12 key and then you can see I have already opened the application and coming back to this URL. So right now you can see if I added a task here like list to to do. So I can say that the rudo. Okay, so it's going to be rudo. If I enter it, then you can see there is a problem. Our local storage is not actually updated. So there is a problem. So the problem is that we have actually created the function, but we have never called this function. So in order to use the function, we need to call it. So to call the function, we need to call the function here inside this add function because add task function. This is a function. So here we need to call this function. Other because here we are after updating the value of the input value to empty string, then we need to call this save task function. So if I control save, we are coming back to the browser again. Right now you can see the there is no data key is actually visible, and also the data from the input type is also washed out, means the removed. So if I enter here list one two two, if I click on the add, then you can see the data key is actually added. If I enter here another like a list to and again here I have added a to do to do okay if I click on the add then you can see we are actually getting the task 0 so task 1 and then we can see the task 1 is list to do then we have the other list which is ta list to do so if I simply refresh the page then you can see the UI is actually removed means the UI data is washed out but the browser has the data means it is not actually removed so we need to find out the way to actually show this data once the web page is loaded okay so for that we need to create the show task function and we need to get the data from the local storage so we need to create another function so here at the end of this save task again we need to create another function so this time the name of the function is going to be show task then we need to start the body of the function so the first we need to get the reference to the list container so list container dot inner html we want the entire inner html is equal to so from where we need to get this data we are going to need to get this data from the local storage dot get item and inside of that we need to pass the key so the key is actually data so make sure the key name is same otherwise if you make any mistake while typing the name of the key you will don't get the data now once we create the function we need to call it in order to get the result so we need to call the function outside of this function at task means once the web page loaded we need to call the function at the global scope so i am going to call it here show task so if i do that so once i refresh the page you can see once i save it the list one to do list two to do to do is already appearing inside the list container which is our main ul list so if i enter here a third element like this is the this is the third task okay if i enter here and click on the add button then you can see the third list is also added here means the third task this is the third task and if i refresh it then you can see still this particular three to do list are actually appearing to the browser even we refresh it so it means that all of these elements is now stored inside the local storage with the use of the save task function and we get this data by using the show task function so our next step is to add the functionality so where is the final product application this is the final product we want to add this functionality when we click on this particular to do we want to display the mark image which is a checked image and also we want to display this line through style and if there is no task is marked then we want to display the default state which we by default get it once we run the application okay but if we again click on it then we want to change the state from checked to unchecked so we need to add the listener to the list container because right now once we actually hover over the list container you can see it's become the pointer so when we click on this particular list item we want to toggle its checked state so for that we need to add the listener to these three elements 
okay means we are going to set the listener to the list container which is a ul element so coming back to the visual studio code so here i'm going to type the list container dot add event listener so instead of that we need to pass the event listener name which is the click event listener and then we need to specify the callback which is the function inside of the function it's going to accept a event which is a argument event argument short for the e and then we need to start the block of this particular code inside of that we need to first check for the condition which is the if condition so if e dot target so first we need to target the tag name so if it is correct like a tag name so it's not appearing the property so we need to type the so we need to target the ally element so if the ally element is clicked we want to change its event state with the use of the dom method so e dot target dot class list so class list is dot we need to use the tool function instead of that we need to pass the class name which is check the checked class name this is the checked class name that we have style already inside the css so we need to pass this class name checked so this will be the if condition and after calling this checked then we need to call the save data function because once we change the state of the ally tag then we need to call this save task function okay so again we need to call this function from here if i control save it and coming back to the chrome browser now if i click on this particular one then you can see the task is actually changed from to do list you can see it is actually also updating the local storage task is checked if i click on it so if i completely refresh it then you can see the state is also saved if i click on this one if i again refresh it then you can see the state is changed if i just click on it means the task is not completed is unchecked and you can see it's actually saved if i click on it then you can see the task is actually checked the classes of these ally elements is actually changed so our next step is to add the functionality remove the element just like this one so if i click on this particular one then we are going to remove the element so for that we need to add the code inside of this else block so here we need to specify an else if condition so i'm going to type here else else and then if and start the body of the if condition which is the else if block and instead of that again we need to target the so i'm going to copy this line of code from here copy it and i'm going to paste it inside the body of the if condition and then we need to tag here the means target the span tag because we are going to create this particular thing so if i enter here one task like this one we are going to create it with the user span tag and we are going to modify its css so that it's going to look like a circular circular cross button and has an hover effect so we after targeting the span tag we need to update the event according to it so we're going to type here event dot target or again i'm just going to copy this line of code or you can just copy this both line of code because we also need to call the save task function once we remove the element from the list okay so here we need to type the remove remove and then it's not going to accept any parameter because when we want to remove the list of the item whether it's checked or not okay so once we do that we are actually going to remove the element from the list so inside of the add task we also need to add this span as a item to the list means this particular is also acting as a item means the list item so we need to add this also in every list item you can see every list item but whichever is added is actually having this particular span element so we need to append this span element inside the list item once we added the data from the input type means input type to list container which is the ul ul our main ul then this container is the class name of the ul element okay so inside of the else block of the add function where we have created the ally element and setting the value from the input text to the list container so here we are going to create the another element which is the span element so i'm going to create here let span is equal to so we are going to create the element so i'm going to copy this line of code here so that it will save a little bit of time and then we need to call it here specify the tag name which is span after specifying the span element then we need to call the span variable 
span dot we need to update its inner html so we need to update the inner html so here we are going to use the this cross simple code so i'm going to use here a slash then we need to type the u then okay u 0 0 and then we need to also add here a d7 so once i did that this is the code for the cross symbol and then we need to append this inside the ally element so ally dot append child this function and then we need to pass the variable which is the span if i control save it so this particular line of code will create the cross at the end of the every list so if i coming back to the browser so if i refresh it you can see right now it's not appearing because the if i just remove the everything if i remove the data from here and if i refresh it then you can see nothing is so if i enter here like first task i here task and if i click on the add then you can see now the cross is also appearing so we need to stylize this cross if i enter here like a second and if i click on the enter then you can see now the cross is appearing but it is we need to style this particular cross symbol so for that we need to come back to our css file so coming back to the css so first coming back to our css style so here at the end of this checked before we need to apply the css code so i'm going to select the ul then ally and then to target the span tag okay so instead of that first we need to provide the position so position is going to be like absolute so it's going to use the absolute positioning so i'm going to provide the right to zero and then we need to provide the top is going to be like five pixel and then width is going to be like a 40 pixel width 40 pixel width and then the height is going to be 40 pixel as well so that it will become a circular in size then font size is going to be 22 pixel and also we need to add the color so color is going to be like hashtag ff55 which is a dark gray then we need to add the line height property so line height is going to be 40 pixel and then we need to add the text alignment property so text alignment is going to be center and after that we need to apply the border radius this is a border radius and with then we need to apply the 50 percent border radius so if i did that and if i control save it then coming back to the browser then you can see now the this particular cross icon is now appearing at the right side of this particular list element so if i click on it then you can see the element is not going to remove we are also going to add the hover effect to as this one as well so coming back to the css part here i am going to copy this and again i am going to paste it here and then closing this one and then we need to add the pseudo element hover so we are going to use the hover uh, hover element and instead of that we need to add the background color or i can use the direct background f3 f3 and f3 Control save it i'm coming back to the chrome browser again if i hover over it then you can see there is a nice circular hover effect to this particular cross span element which will act as a cross icon for deleting the to-do list items but if i click on this button the remove functionality is actually not working although i have added the code inside this particular script.js file inside the else block so there is something like a problem we have created the button like a span element which will be a cross button to delete the elements from the to-do list application then we have called the save task and we here we are actually using the tool means we are changing the tool state means checked or unchecked so inside of that we have e to target so here actually i have made a mistake instead of class list we need to use here a parent element because we want to remove the parent element so this will be the property that we want to use which is a e dot target dot parent element so if i control save it and if i again coming back to the browser so if i click on this chrome like cross button then you can see the task is actually removed and also the save task function is called if i click on the remove then you can see our local storage of the browser is also gets empty so if i enter here a uh, one task and then again here i enter a uh, two task you can just add a meaningful task or if i enter here a 
three tasks. Then you can see these three tasks is added to the local storage. And if I click on the any of the task, like if I want to remove the second task, and if I click on this, and if I just simply refresh it, then you can see the application saving its state means the data is saved in the browser. If I click on this particular one, which is a checked one, I want to remove this one. Then you can see the that one is also removed, and we are left with the only third task. If I click on it, and if I refresh it. Then you can see the application is working fine if i click on the remove then you can see the task is removed and if i refresh it then there is no empty task is appearing inside the ui element of this to do list application so guys that marks the completion of this lecture we have successfully built the to do list application if you face any problem while developing this application and if you have any doubts then you can actually post your questions in the q a section of the course so if you find this course helpful then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to improve the quality of my courses also my upcoming future courses so definitely leave a review because it's going to help me to increase the quality and the quantity of the course thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you Hello and welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the notes taking application. This will be the application that we are going to build in this particular module. So you can see once I launch the application, you will see this particular note sticker in which we can enter the data. So this is the notes. You can see I have added this particular data here. So if I simply click on this save icon, so it's going to save the data inside my browser storage. So if I refresh the page, then you can see the data is still present inside this particular note sticker and here you can see at the right side of this particular button add note we can add as many notes we want so here we can see if i enter here the second and then if i enter here like third if i can say that third then this one is going to like fourth and this one is our fifth so you can see i have entered the five data inside these five sticky notes you can say that the sticky notes or whatever you want to say that but it actually like looks like a little bit of the mac notes stickers okay so if i refresh it then you can see this particular is still save the data inside the local storage so if i click on this delete button then we can delete the data means we can delete the notes and if i just simply going to remove this one then you can see we are left only with the third one so if i again refresh it then it's going to save this third one also inside the local browser storage if i delete each and every note then if i refresh the page then you can see then there is a blank note will be appeared so that at least we can show the user a one note instead of showing the blank screen just with the add note button in previous project we also use the local browser storage to store the to-do list items in this one we are going to store these particular notes but we need to store multiple ones and also we need to take care of the added new notes so we're going to add the logic for all of them as well also this particular thing is achieved by using css we need to actually do a lot of work with the css so the css one will take a little bit more time Okay, so our first step is to start with the HTML part of the notes taking application. Welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to start with the notes taking application HTML part first. So for that, you can see that I have already created the three files index.html, style.css and script.js file. So inside of that, I have already linked my style.css file and also the script.js file. So before adding any HTML elements, we also need to use the font awesome website. So if you go to the Google, means if you open your browser and simply type the font awesome, so this will be the link comes first. So just simply click on this font awesome website first link, then simply click on the start for free because we need to use the icons. So if I show you, these are the font awesome icons. That is why we need to create the account inside the font awesome. So I have already created the account inside the font awesome and you will get a verification email so i have already opened the another email account which is my another email account which i will be using for this tutorial demonstration purpose how to create the account inside the font awesome website and also get the verification link and then also we need to add a one script tag so that we can easily use the font awesome website so i'm going to tell you the step by step procedure so first you need to come back to your again a browser you need to type the font awesome website in the search bar and then once you come to the font awesome website simply click on the start for free and once here you need to add your email id so i'm going to add my another email id so simply click on the set kit embedded code if you click on it then it's going to send it the key then you can see check your email so if i again coming back to the other browser window 
So here you can see now we get the email account found on some website. This is the email account. So simply click on the confirm your email address. So it's going to confirm the email address. So here it is going to send ask you to set up. Let's finish the setting up new password. So you can set a password for your website. So I'm going to set the password. And then also you need to confirm your password. Once you do that, simply click on the set password and continue. Then simply click on the no thanks because I don't want to say. Then skip this process because you don't need to create your profile. We can do it later on. And then you need to copy this font or some line of JavaScript, just the classic way of using font or some. So simply click on this particular line because you need to use it. So I'm going to just simply click on this particular line because we need to use it and coming back to your visual studio code where we you have created the index.html simply going to paste it here at the top of your script tag okay so that we can use the font awesome website now we have the access to the font awesome website anonymously okay and then if you come back to the icons here you can just simply click on the icons note that one and here you can search for the different icons that you can use for your website or for your project so you can use any of the icons just simply click on it and here you just simply need to use this class or you can add this particular tag simply copy this tag and coming back to your visual studio code where you have added the project so i'm going to here type a button and inside of this button i'm going to paste the icon of the font awesome and then i will be adding the text so it is going to like add and then here i need to add the id to this particular button which is our add btn so i need to also specify the equal to sign and then here i will be typing the id name as add btn if i control save it and coming back to my chrome browser so just coming back to the application where we have search so this is a brave browser this is my chrome browser and if i come back to the chrome browser here i just need to do that okay so the problem is that the window is very small okay now the window is actually so if you can now you can see we have this trash icon actually appearing inside this button okay so we have successfully used the font awesome inside the project but we don't need this trash icon because we want to display the icon that will be look like this one you can see at this particular plus icon so for that i have already noted down the class which is actually a class that i'm going to type the name here inside of that so first i'm just going to remove this one so it is going to be FAS, then FA, then hyphen, then it's going to have a plus. So if I control save it, then coming back to the Chrome browser again, then you can see now we get this plus icon. So our next step is to add more HTML element to this particular project. So let's start adding one by one. Now first I'm going to close all of these particular windows so that I can release the load on my browser because now I have shown you how to use the font also. The main thing is you need to get this particular anonymous tag and then the class name you need to remember in order to use the icons so i already note down the icons into my notepad so i'm going to use that if you want to use your own icons because you like it you just need to go to the website and simply search for the icons that you want to use simply click on the font awesome website again just wait for the time to load your website and click on the icons like you want to use the plus icons you can use different kinds of icons as your wish okay it's totally up to you you can use the icon as per your wish so at the end of this button we need to add a one div tag so this div tag has an id of main so we need to use the equal operator and then double quotes so this will have the main id now whatever content will be placed is will be added inside the main container and this button will be fixed at the right side of the browser screen so if i you can see this button is placed at the right side of the browser and the position of this button is going to be fixed so if i add multiple like uh, these elements then you can see if i scroll in then still the position of this button is actually fixed okay so this is why this button is going to be styled outside of the main container so that is the reason this button is not being placed inside the main container so after that we need to add some more elements inside it so again where we need to use the div tag for the note and instead of this note we need to create the header which is a tools div and then we need a text area so the tool is going to be like for this one this is will be act as a tool 
that has a save and this trash icon. So here we added a node and then we need to add a, another division which is a tool. And inside of that we need to add the two font awesome icons. So I'm going to copy the tag and also the class and inside of that I'm going to change the class name. So it is going to be like fa hyphen save. And then I'm going to duplicate it into one more time by pressing the shift alt and down arrow key. And then I will be changing the name to trash. Okay, if I save it, then you will see the trash and the save icon inside the browser window. And after that, inside this tool, means after the end of the tool division, we need to add the another tag, which is our text area. Then removing all the elements of the text area, because we are going to actually update the element of the text area dynamically with the JavaScript. Now this entire code, I will be commented out once the HTML part of the project is done because that is why I have added here this code. Once I done the style part of this whole nodes project, then I'm going to comment it down and then we will be creating this node by using the DOM methods of the JavaScript. Okay, so if I control save it, then you will also see the text area. So the HTML part of this nodes taking application is done. So our next step is to start with the CSS part of the application. So let us start with the CSS part of the note taking application. So for that we need to use the style.css file. So you can see this is now our style.css file. It is totally empty. So instead of that first we need to provide the style for the universal selector. So that we can change the style for the browser. Right now you can see it has a padding and margin. So we need to reset the margin and padding. So for that we need to here use the asterisk sign. That is for the universal selector. Then we need to start the pair of the curly brackets. And instead of that, we are going to first specify the padding value. So padding value is going to be 0. And then we need to reset the margin to 0 as well. And then we need to use the box sizing property to border box. This border box will actually use to resolve the horizontal scrolling of the project. Now you can see the margin and padding is removed, which is the default margin and padding. So the next thing is we need to add the background color. So for that we need to select the body element. Inside of the body element we need to use the property called background. And then inside the background we are going to use the linear gradient. So this will be our linear gradient. And then we need to provide the angle. It is from left to right. So we are going to set to right. Then we need to specify the comma. And after that here we need to add the color. Or I can say that to right bottom. And then we need to add the color here, which is the color code I have already noted in my notepad. So this will be the color of the first color. Then we need to use the second color because linear gradient is going to work with two color. That is why it is called as linear gradient. So this will be the color. If I control save it, now you can see the color is created, but we get this repeated lines of color means this repeated pattern. To resolve this, we have actually added a main, which is a uh, like this one. You can see this is our main container that has an ID. So we need to provide the min height value to this particular main. So I'm going to copy this here and coming back to the CSS part. And here we need to use the hash character and then we need to paste the name of the ID and then start the pair of the curly brackets again. And then inside of that first we need to specify the property which is a min height property. So min height is going to be like 100 VH. Once I did it then you can see the problem is solved. So the next property we need to use is the padding from bottom which we can do it because once we add the cards to our application so if I show you the final output the final project if I add it multiple times then we can see this is our scrolling so we need to add some padding the last card so coming back to the visual studio code again so here I am going to complete the code padding bottom so padding bottom is going to be like 50 pixel. Now the next property we need to use the display property. So display is going to be flex and then we need to use the justify content. We know very well about these properties because these are used to center the content. So then, then we need to use the align items property. So align items is going to be flex start. So now you can see our 
particular thing is actually at the center of the screen. Now this button is we are going to fix its position to the right side of the screen. We are going to separately handle this button. So the main thing is actually set it here. You can see now the tools is actually appearing at the top of this particular text area and also the text area is now appear at the center but we need to actually restrict the size of the text area. So coming back to the Visual Studio code again that marks the completion of the code for the main ID and then we need to provide the style code for the add button. So copy the add button here means the add ID this is the button who is having the ID add button again need to use the hash character then pasting the ID name and instead of that first we need to position we need to set its position to fixed add the so once I did it then you can see its position is fixed no matter if I scroll it then its position will remain at the corner of the browser screen so we need to position it at the right side so for that we need to use these two properties which is top property so from top we need to provide the 20 pixel and from right we need to provide the 20 pixel again now these two property only work with the position attribute means the position property so now you can see the button is actually at the right side of the screen now we need to add some style to this button so that it will be look like this like a green type button so for that coming back to visual studio code again so first we need to change its background color and then we need to change the color to white so first i'm going to change the color to white or i can use the azure color and then we need to provide the background color so background color is going to be the hashtag 179 and then we need to use 1712 which will give us a little bit of dark green color you can see it here if i just simply shrink the size of the window of the visual studio code and after that we need to add the padding property so padding is going to be from both sides is going to be like 15 pixel now already 15 pixel is too big so i'm going to use the 10 pixel and after that the next property we need to set the border to none and then we also need to set the outline to none then we need to use the border radius property so border radius is 5 pixel and then cursor is going to be pointer and then the last property which is the transition so there should be a nice transition effect we are going to apply the transition for the background color so it's going to the background color then we need to provide the time which is uh, seconds and then we need to use the ease so if i do that then you can see now the button color is changed next we need to add the hover effect to this button so that when we hover it then we need to change its color so for that we need to use the pseudo class which is hover and instead of that we need to place the background color property so this will be the background color property and then we need to change the color so color is going to be like 06A086 once i save it and coming back to the browser output then you can see now the button color is changed now coming back to the visual studio code again so our next step is to actually create the note so if i show you the final output so this note we want to create so for that we need to style the note element means the note element the class in which the note element is specified means the selector is specified note class is specified to that particular element which is this particular one so we need to apply the class for the note so copy this class name here and coming back to the style.css again then we need to specify the dot operator and then pasting the name of the class and then start its body the first thing is we need to specify the width to this node so width is actually a 300 pixel and then we need to add the background color so background color is going to be little bit of darkish gray so 393e46 so if i control save it then you can see the top toolbar is actually getting the color then we also need to actually provide the width to this text area which we are going to handle once we complete this particular toolbar not a toolbar it is actually looks like a toolbar but with the use of div we need to also align these two icons at the right side of the toolbar or you can say that the right side of the note container so coming back to the visual studio code again and here we need to add the margin property so margin is going to be like 15 pixel after adding the margin we need to add the border radius so border radius is like our 10 pixel so that we get a nice rounded corners and then we need to use the box 
shadow property to give a shadow effect so that it will look like a title so that it looks like a title toolbar then we need to add a 2 pixel then 6 pixel and also we need to add the rgba function that is going to 0 0 0 and for the alpha is going to be 0 0.1 so if i save it then if i see the output then you can see if i shrink the size of this uh, text area you can see now it's taking up this space then we need to add the color to the text area so it will look like this so coming back to the visual studio code again and here after the box shadow we need to add the overflow hidden after adding the overflow hidden property the next we need to add the transition property so transition is going to be like a box shadow so we need to add a transition for the box shadow property box shadow and then we need to add here a time which is 0.3 seconds and then we need to use the ease function so once i save it then you will see things like a little bit uh, same as for the our output application again coming back to visual studio code so we need to add the hover effect to this note application means the note card that we are actually building for the note taking so here we need to add this sudo element note of semicolon it's going to be a colon and then we need to add the box shadow so i'm copy this box shadow from here note this one this is the box shadow property that is our transition one then we need to increase the box shadow so it's going to be 4 pixel then this one is for 10 pixel and then i'm increasing the alpha if i control save it then you can see when we hover over it then you will see a nice shadow effect okay so our next step is to add the code for the tool and also for this text area so first i'm going to add the code for the tool so the it is a class selector so we need to use the dot and then we need to provide the class name and then the pair of curly brackets so the first property we need to add the background color so background color is going to be like uh, hashtag 222 and 831 if i control save it slightly darker than now you can see the this color is actually light and this color which is a tool color toolbar you can say that is actually a little bit darker than this particular note container and then we need to add the another color which is a color white so whatever present inside these will be display white if i save it then you can see the trash icon and the save icon is now appearing white and then again we need to add the other properties which is padding property because right now they are coming at the very edge of the screen you can see now before the padding they actually cut it because of the overflow property and also the padding and then we need to move it then we need to move it to the right side so for that we will be using the display property so display is going to be flex if i did it then now they are actually appearing very close to each other then we need to provide the another property which is justify content so justify we are going to provide actually at the flex end if i do that then now they are actually appearing then we need to add the style for the font or some icons so for that we need to copy this i can copy this one font awesome then we need to provide the i symbol and then we need to actually open and close this particular curly bracket for the selector so first we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 5 pixel if i save it then you can see the difference okay and then we need to add the cursor to pointer so that when we hover over it then it will the cursor will change it to pointer so that we can it indicate that we are actually now click it on these particular buttons and then next we need to add the transition so that there should be a nice effect so transition is for the color not a background one because they are actually at the front of the code so that is it looks like a text font so that is why so transition is in and then we need to also apply the hover effect so again copy it pasting it and then we need to close with this one then use this pseudo element and instead of that we need to add the color property again so i'm going to copy now i can simply type it so it is a color property then we need to add the color code so it is actually a a c a one a one so this will be the color code which is a little bit of dark gray color now you can see it actually looks great so the next step is we need to add the color code for the text area so again i'm going to type here note then need to select the text area inside the class of the note if you go back to the html this is a note class and inside of that there is two element two child one is div and the second child is text area 
so now we need to style the text area so text area and opening and closing its pair of curly brackets then first we need to remove its border so border is going to be like none then we need to provide the min minimum height to this one so that we can enter it so it is going to be like 220 pixel you can increase the height as per your need then we need to add the resize property to none so that we so that the user can resize its length and width now you can see the resize bar is removed now you can see the height is fixed but now it is not looks good so again coming back to the here and inside of that we need to add the padding property so padding is going to be like 10 pixel and then we need to increase the font size so font size is going to be like 16 pixel not 106 it is 16 pixel if i save it and we need to provide the color to this one so the color is going to be white you can see this is our color now the we need to provide the color to this also so we can also make the background to transparent if i want to make it then we can make the background to transparent so you can see now it's actually appearing also we need to fix the border because when we click on it so it is a focus property so we need to fix it so for that we need to use this one again if i copy it if i paste it here and if i close this one then we need to use the pseudo class which is focus so we need to change its outline so when we focus on it we need to set the none if i save it then you can see the note is actually looking great but right now you can see the size is actually like this so you can increase its uh, minimum width also so the width of the container if i go back to the visual studio board so we have actually applied the width to, to the node which is 300 pixel so we're going to cut the width over here and then we're going to paste the width inside this node text area if i save it then you can see now it is looks great so you can increase the width as well so i am actually increasing its width which is to 400 pixel which is actually very big so we need to add the like 300 is great 300 if i control save it then you can see now it is looks similar than this one this is actually a grammarly plugin so i'm going to click on this shut now okay so now it is actually sh shut down okay so now the designing part of this particular note application is done you can see it is the same than the final one that we actually want to build so if i control refresh it then you can see this will be the logic whenever we refresh the page at least we are able to see a one card so you can see it is almost the identical than this one here we have just and the added a text add so we need to add the text as well this is add note coming back to the index.html where is that this is it add note i save it then you can see the both are similar so the next step is to start with the javascript part of this note taking application So now this CSS and HTML part of the note taking application is done. Now it's time to start with the JavaScript part. So the first thing is we need to fetch the ID of this button. So when we click on this button, we want to display the as many notes as we want. So coming back to the Visual Studio code again. So inside of this index.html, first I'm going to comment out this particular HTML elements, which is our note. So class. So we are going to generate this entire code dynamically. So once I control save it, then you can see the card is actually invisible because right now this is actually not visible because we have removed the html element so the first thing is we need to fetch the id of this main element and also this add btn so coming back to our script.js so here i am going to create the const variable and then i am going to name the variable as add btn then it is we are going to use the document dot query selector so query selector inside of that we need to specify the name of the class which is hash add btn and after that we need to press the shift and hold key and then press the down arrow key to actually duplicate the code and then i'm going to here provide the name of the division tag which is the main means we are creating the variable name main and also we need to specify here main now we have the reference to these two elements now we can come back to the script.js and we need to add the listener to this button so when we click on this particular button we want to display the notes so for that we need to use the add btn dot add event listener and inside of this add event listener we need to pass the listener. So
so we are going to pass the click listener and then here we need to provide the callback which is our add node so this is a function that we need to create it so i'm going to type here a function name so function add btn and then we need to provide its body so inside of this add btn we need to create a variable of node so when is this variable is of type const and then we need to use the node and inside of that we are going to use the document dot create element so we want to create a element so this is the create element function which is a method of the dom so you want to use this function or you can say that the method so we want to create a division this particular division we want to create a div tag and then we want to assign a class so with the user class list we can assign a class name so now we are going to use this particular variable which is note dot class list so class list is actually we need to use the function dot because we want to add a class list and instead of that we need to provide the name of the class list which is note and after that providing the class list note we want to update its inner html because we want to append this html to this particular note so for that we want to use the inner html so this is our inner html and equal to we are going to use here a template strings by using the backtick characters and then we can actually split it into multiple lines so here we are going to copy the code this is particular one so from the we want to copy the code from the tool because we already have a reference to the note variable so copy it and then coming back to the script.js and i'm going to paste it the code here then i'm going to format the code so just taking it like this and also this will be displayed inside of this one tab space and also this will be displayed one tab space so if i control save it because we already have the listener to the button so if i come back to the browser if i click it then you will see nothing is visible that is because we have created this particular code which is the note but we have not set this note to this particular main because this, that is a main container in which everything will be displayed so coming back to the script.js file and here inside the main i'm going to use its function which is like uh, add or you can say that the append child note add it is like the append child function and inside of that it is going to accept our parameter note so if i control save it and come back to the browser if i click it then you can see still it is not displaying so the problem is that we have here used the wrong function name we have to here use the add note that is our reason it is not actually working so if i control save it and if i come back to the browser and if i click it then you can see these particular notes are now vis visible to the screen but there is a one problem these are actually appearing in a one single row so we need to actually change its flex property so we need to use here a flex wrap property inside the main container so coming back to the visual studio code and inside the style.css so here at the end of this particular i'm going to use here a flex wrap property and we are going to set the flex to wrap property so once i did it then you can see now it is actually visible properly in a 100% viewport of the browser so now coming back to the visual studio code so again coming back to the script.js so i have made a typo here that is the reason it is actually not working also we need to add the classes to this particular save and trash icon because these are the class name for the font or some icon so when we click on it then we want to perform the corresponding operation so when we click on the like inside of this particular one if we click on the save button then we want to save the data and when we click on this delete button then we want to delete the data so for that we need to add the listener so for that we need to add here a selector name so i'm going to create here a save and then also we need to add here a trash so now we need to actually create the variables for the save trash and text area so with the use of this node we need to get the access to these variables because right now we have created the inner html so we are in a inner html so to access the inner html we need to use this variable so at the top of this main append dot child note line we need to create here some more constant variables so the first one is going to be save then it is going to be equal to like uh, our note so here we need, don't need to use the document here we need to use the note query selector and then we need to provide the name of the query selector so inside of the double quotes we need to provide here a save and then i need to again duplicate this into one more time then this is going to be trash so and here also we need to provide the trash and then again we need to create a duplicate but at this point of time we need to here use the text area and this is the dot is not going to be used here 
because we are actually using here a tag name not a class or id or any other selector name we are going to here select the tag name that is why we, we don't need to specify here a dot so make sure you don't specify a dot and after that we need to add the listener to all of these three elements now again i'm coming back to the browser to actually tell you some concepts so when we click on this particular one, we want to save the data inside the browser local storage so if i press the f12 key then you can see the application then we are inside the local storage of the browser so when we click on this save button we want to store the data in a form of key value pair key value pair so to do that we need to create a one more function which is the save data function okay so we want to create that save data function so coming back to visual studio code before adding the listener to this one because we required that save data function we want to create that first so first i am going to here type the function then the name of the function is going to be save notes or you can name it as like save data then you need to start its brackets and curly brackets opening and closing curly brackets of the function so the main thing that we want to store is the data of this particular text area and this particular structure of the node so that is what actually we want to store inside the browser storage but the main thing is we want to store the data so for that we need to create this here another variable of type const and this is actually equals to nodes so we want to store the couple of nodes that is why here i have actually also added a s which is for the plural then i'm going to use the document dot and then we need to use the query selector all because i'm actually selecting multiple elements here so the first we need to select the dot note and then with the space and then we need to provide here a text area and after that we need to use another variable which is our const data and then inside of that we need to convert this array of nodes right now the data will be stored in a form of key value pair so we need to actually or we can say that these particular are actually storing in a form of node list so let me complete the code then i will be explaining it with the log cat means with the use of console.log so here i am using the dot from and inside of that i am going to pass the nodes and then we need to use the map function to actually loop through the array so here we need to use the node and then the array op arrow operator the arrow and then we need to use the dot node dot value so if i here use the console dot log and then i'm going to use here the pass the nodes as well as the data so after doing this we need to call this function also but before that we need to add the logic for the local storage otherwise we are not able to see it so also we need to add here one more condition if condition so before adding if condition let me just first run the application so once we click on the save button we want to save the data so here i'm going to add the listener to the save not svg so add event listener and i'm going to explain this line of code in just a couple of minutes first i want to show something so instead of that we need to provide the listener which is the click listener and then we need to provide the callback which is the save notes if i save it and come back to our browser so if i click it here so right now the data is not going to be added the reason for that it is actually showing some errors and the answer is correct we are is going to show the error add event listener save note so it is actually showing that the save seva so actually i have actually made here a wrong thing seva so seva is not a variable name here it is actually a save so where did it actually come as seva so again i'm going to save notes and come back to the browser then you can see the now doesn't show the error at this point of time coming back to the application then local storage so if i add here something and if i click on this particular one and inside the console log you can see this is the node list okay and now this is the array that we have actually getting it here now these two are empty that is why the first one is empty which is a zero index and this one is also empty which is the second index so we have added the data only in the second card and if i enter the data here like if i enter here a numeric value 2 to 2 and save it then you can see the data is again saved and if i enter here a like 666 then you can see the data is saved now the this particular line of code does work is actually going to create the node list like this one is actually creating a node list here you can see so to traverse this node list easily because these are as contain some html element as well because this node list has contained a text area html elements so in order to actually traverse this properly i have added this logic here array dot form function so this nodes has actually having a 
list of the HTML node. List of the HTML node. Node nodes is actually an ODE because of my accent. That is why I am actually pronouncing the name of the concept. Node list and ODE list node list. Or you can say that the HTML collection. So in order to traverse it, we need to use the array dot form nodes function. Once we traverse it, we need to get the value into the data. So for that, we have used this map function. So the syntax of the map it is going to take a counter and then it's going to counter what note dot value. So that is the reason we have passed here note dot value. We want to get the nodes and then display it inside the data means to save the data means save whatever the value of the nodes and save it inside the data and then we are going to console log it. So this data is now actually this is the main data we are actually saving inside the because whatever data we are actually getting from these three text area is going to store with the use of map function inside it the array and that value will be stored inside this particular variable data so you can see now we are able to save the nodes so this is the node list data and this is the data that we have saved so this is the data we are getting with the use of this particular line of code okay so we are successfully able to save the data but we want to save this data permanently inside the local storage right now you can see this data is actually visible inside the console.log we want to store it inside the local storage right now the key value pair is empty so for that we need to add a logic so coming back to visual studio code so here first we need to check for the condition if there is no nodes inside the list data dot length if it is equals to equals to zero so if it is that a case then we actually want to remove the data from the local storage so we are going to use here a remove item function and inside of that we need to provide the parameter so the parameter that we want to remove is the nodes because this is the key that we actually want to remove from the local storage if it is not a case if the data inside the text area is not empty means the data variable is not empty so we want to save the data inside the local storage so for that we are going to here use the local storage and then we need to set the item so instead of that we want to set what we want to set the nodes so make sure the keys are actually same and then we need to save the data in a form of json dot stringify we want to save the data in a form of json and what we want to save we want to save the data now if i control save it and if i come back to the browser so if i click here to add here and if i enter here ff and if i enter here 22 or we can say that the 3 if i control save it then you can see now we are actually able to save the data inside the local storage if i just simply say here like enter more data if i click go add and if i enter here another like a card or you can say that some random stuff if i just simply click on this save icon then you can see the this one is now saved okay so now you can see the data is actually now saved inside the local storage now the next thing is we want to save the data when we actually enter the data inside the text area so to add that particular logic we want to set the listener to this particular text area so again after the end of this save data here i am going to add the text area dot add event listener and instead of that we need to specify the event name which is input and then we need to call the function so here again we need to call the function which we have created which is the save notes if i just simply save it and come back to the browser means our chrome so actually i minimize it if i click it here and enter here like 444 four, four, now you can just carefully see so when we enter the data as i enter the data inside this particular one then you can see the data when i out of this the data is actually added if i enter another one so you can see it's going to update the data immediately inside the local storage of the so that is the functionality that we want to implement whenever we enter the data and when the data will be saved inside the local storage so after doing this the next step is we want to add the listener to this trash icon so when we click on it we want to delete the data from this local storage as well and also we want to update the ui so for that we need to come back to the visual studio which is obvious so again here we need to add the listener to the trash so for adding the listener to the trash icon we also need to add a one method so here we are going to call a self calling method so instead of the trash we need to add a listener add event listener and again we need to provide here a listener name which is our click and then instead of that we need to add a another callback so this is actually an anonymous callback means the arrow function here i will be adding a terminator and then coming back to the next line 
so we want to remove what we want to remove the note so note dot so we are going to remove the note and simply calling this one and also we need to call the save here so after removing the note we need to call this save function because once we delete the data inside this node then we want to call the save data so if i enter here fff then the four and here if i enter six six so as soon as i click on this particular one we want to call the save data function to actually re-render the ui and inside of the save data if you can see it here we are actually also updating the local storage so that is the reason whenever we click on the save data means whenever we click on the delete button with this is our trash icon so it is going to call the save data okay so the functionality of all of this is actually done if i click on it then it's done. now the only functionality that we want is actually whenever we refresh the page we want that our data should be displayed to the screen so whatever nodes are present inside the local storage we want to display it also whenever there is no nodes inside the application if i just simply delete this entire entry and if i refresh the page for the first time we want to display at least one node to the screen so that the user can see that it is a note taking application because we don't want to show this blank screen so for that we need to create another function which is our load notes function so coming back to the visual studio code again here so at the end of the save notes function i'm going to call the function keyword after function keyword we need to add the name of the function which is load notes and starting its empty brackets and giving so inside of this function we need to create a local storage node variable so ls nodes which is short for the local storage node so we need to fetch data so for that we need to use a json dot parse function and from where we want to fetch the data so we want to fetch data from the local storage so local storage dot get item because we want to get the item and then we need to provide the key so our key name is nodes remember inside the save data we are passing the key where is the key this is the we actually this is one we are setting the key that is nodes so that is why we also need to provide here a same key so after that we have the reference to the ls nodes but we don't have the like uh, we can we can't actually update the inner html of the main directly but there is a mechanism we need to use so the first thing we need to check for the if there is any null node present inside it because we need to also check for the node if there is no null nodes then we want to display it. if there is a null node then we want to display only a single card blank card inside the screen so these are the two condition will be checked so we are going to check for the one condition if there is a node present inside the local storage then we want to fetch it so for that first we are going to here add a if condition if instead of that first i will be adding here a ls nodes so if the nodes is not equal to null which is obvious in the first case this block will not be executed because right now the our local storage is empty so inside of that first i'm going to use the local dot nodes so for each if there is a data is present inside the node that this block will be executed so we are going to use here a for each function note this array one this is the for each the capital one then we need to provide the brackets and also we need to start the block of this for each inside of this curly brackets note outside of it and then we need to provide the terminator and after that inside of this for each block we need to call a function which is add node now this is actually used to create this card structure because we don't because the thing is that we get the reference to the nodes which is a string array data means key value pair data right now it is empty because i deleted it so if i just simply here like if i had because this is a node right now we are getting the access of the key value pair but we are not getting the access to this entire node structure so we also need to create it with the user right now i have added if i refresh it then you can see the data is present inside the node so with the use of this particular line of code like uh, calling the add node function here let's actually get the reference so here it is actually showing the error the reason for that error is actually we need to also provide here a node text and also the arrow pair and now the error is sold this particular add node will does what it's actually going to create the node structure for us like this structure because whenever we refresh the page we want to fetch this data and we want to display that data inside the node structure so we want to add the node to the screen that is why we have called here a add node function and after that calling the add node function we need to create a const variable because to get the text 
this is a key value for pair text because we want to display the data so for that we are going to use here a document dot query selector so we want to use the query selector which is our note and also the text area so first we need to use here a dot for the note and then we need to provide the text area as well because we want to select both and after that selecting this one then we need to create a, another variable which is the last node because by default the array indexing is in every programming language the array indexing is starting from zero so to get the last element the whatever the length of the array we need to use the minus one so that we can get the index of the last element here we need to add the last note is equal to and if i use here notes so then we are going to here pass the array brackets because it is actually an array all right then we need to pass here a notes dot length and then we need to pass the minus one just i already told you and then we need to update the value to this ls note that is uh, this variable okay so that we can display it so we need to update the value of this ls note this is ls note dot value it is equal to note text so whatever value we are actually traversing it is actually stored inside this note text okay so once we complete the code the next thing is we need to actually call this function so here i am going to type the load notes we are calling it in a global scope so if i control save it and if i come back it then you can see the data is actually fetched from the browser if i refresh it then you can see the data is still present so if i add one more note here one one and if i just simply first i am going to delete everything add one here if i add it here one 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 which is the first note then this is for the three three or i can say that the two two for the second node then this will be our 333 three, three. and this will be our 444 so you can see now the all four nodes are saved if i just simply refresh it then you can see we get the correct orientation of the data means one one which is stored at the zero index you can see here it is actually giving the briefing so if i come back to visual studio code and if i just remove here a minus one and also complete the round square bracket control save it then you can see everything is washed out because we are not getting the last index of the array our logic is not working and if i enter again one more time like one 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 two 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 add and here I like three 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 if i refresh it then you can see our data is completely collapsed so we need to find out the index of the last element that is why we need to specify here a minus one because this will solve the problem so now the project is actually working fine now the local storage procedure is completed it's actually going to store the data inside its local storage so i have closed it now when i just refresh it you can see the data is visible but if i delete all the elements from the local storage as well if i refresh the page then you can see there is no default card is appearing whereas in the final application you can see there's a default card is appearing even if i refresh the page you can see even if I refresh the page, then this default card is visible. So to add that logic, coming back to Visual Studio Code again. So here inside of this, this will be executed when there is a note is actually present inside the local story. So right now this if block is not executed. So we need to write an else block as well. So else inside of that we need to call the add note function. I need to provide the round brackets to call that function. If I control save it, then you can see now it is actually visible. So even if I refresh it, then you can see there is a one card is visible to this particular screen. So if I add here like FFF or whatever you want to type, add here and if I write and some and random stuff, another some random stuff, and if I refresh it, then you can see the data is saved inside its local storage. So now our note taking application gets completed. So if you find this course helpful, then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses and also my future courses also it will help me to reach more students so that's it for this lecture thank you for watching and i will see in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to create the password strength application checker so this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module so you can see it has this input type and you can it has a placeholder text enter your password and this particular button which is actually used to toggle between the show and hide the password 
So if I enter here like a password, then you can see the right now the password is weak. So as soon as I enter the value inside of it, then it's going to update the value of this particular result element, which is our paragraph element. So if I enter the password, then you can see it's actually changing from medium, strong and like weak password. If I can just simply click on this button, then it's going to reveal the password. So we are going to create this particular one. It's a just simple password validation that you can done with the use of JavaScript. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of this particular password strength application checker. Now first we have to start with the HTML part of this application which is password strength checker. Before moving forward, we need to use one image. So I have already imported the image inside of my directories so you can see this is the password.png so i have already added this particular image inside of this folder under the image directory so make sure you download this resource file in the download resource section of this lecture so once you download it and once you extract it you will get this image folder inside of that you will get this password arrow image that is a png image so you need to import it i have already shown you in the first project where we have developed it to do this application if you not watch that module you can watch that module and see how we have added the image inside this particular image directory also i have created all the files inside the visual studio code which is our index.htm style.css and script.js file so to save a little bit of time and also I have changed the title to password strength checker and also i have launched the application inside the chrome browser so if i just minimize it and you can see the chrome browser you can see the title is password strength checker so the first thing is we need to add the html elements so there are total like uh, five html elements or some of them are containers so first we need to add a container so i'm going to type here a container and pressing the tab key so it's going to give us a division so this container is will be used to actually center the all other elements inside the center of the browser screen means we need to use the container to center all the other elements so that can display it in the center of the screen and this is the final product that we want to build in this entire module so i'm going to minimize it and after that again i'm going to add another class which is input box and then instead of that we need to add the input type so input type so here i actually have to type the input type and then you can see the tag is automatically pop up so the type is going to be password then we need to provide the id so the id is also going to be password a smaller one and then we need to add the placeholder text so the placeholder text is enter your password okay so that marks the input type then we need to place the button so this is the button that we want to actually display so this button will be added inside this input box so after the input type we need to add here a button and then we need to add the type of this button so this button is going to be of type submit because on this particular submit we are going to handle the situations of the hide and show of the password and after that inside this particular button we need to add the image so i'm going to type here image src Inside of that, we need to provide the path which is our images. This is our images, and then the password arrow.png. And then we need to provide the alternate text as well if the image is not somehow so we can see the error as well, means that will just only indicate the errors. That is arrow image. If I control save it and come back to browser, then you can see we have the input type and the image also next here again we need to add a one more element inside of this input box which is the paragraph element to show the result so paragraph instead of that i'm going to add the message or you can add a result as per your need i'm just going to create here a message which is going to display the message whether the password is strong or weak and also inside of this paragraph element i'm going to use a one span element so inside this pan, it is going to display the ID and then we need to add here a strength. 
and I think just simply a smaller one. If I control save it, then we will see these elements nothing because just enter here weak just for the reference purpose. Once we are started with the CSS code, then we are going to remove the text from this particular element. Okay, so that marks the completion of the code for the HTML part. So the next step is to start with the CSS of this password strength checker application. Now it's time to start with the CSS part of the project. So for that we need to use the style.css file. So I have already linked my CSS file. So you can see it here inside the link tag. Inside the CSS file first we need to reset the basic styling of the browser. So here we need to select the universal selector and then we are going to use the margin property. So margin is 0 and padding is 0 and the and after that we need to set the border box which is the box sizing box sizing is equal to border box so this will be the basic style that will reset the style of the browser and after that we need to add the container so the container the main container and then inside of the container first we need to specify the height so height is going to be 100 vh if I control save it, then you will see nothing. Then we need to provide the width as well. So width is going to be like 100%. Then you can see these are still at the left side of the website. And after that we need to add here a background color. Or I can use that as background property can be used. So I am going to use the background color. And then here will be 4B. So this will be the dark uh, purple color that we are going to use. Purple is or I can say that the bluish color combination of blue and purple. Then we need to use the display property. So display is going to be flex. If I did that, then you can see now all of these are actually appearing in a one single. But we need to use here another property which is justify content center. If I did that, then now you can see they are actually appearing at the center of. And after that, we need to add the another property which is align items align items center now you can see the entire elements is now appearing at the center of the screen so the next step is we need to add the style code for the input box input box so first we need to specify the width so width is going to be like 400 pixel which is the input width so you can just simply select the color as well if you want to see the input width this is the input width so it is not going to be outside of it if you want to add a card like structure but i want to display like in a simple way i don't want to display a card like structure just like we have did in the previous to do list application okay so coming back to the one so i'm going to remove this background color property now the next property we need to use is the position so position is going to be relative so this will be used to actually set the other elements because we are going to set the position of the button to absolute so button is going to we are going to stylize the button according to the this particular input type so after that we need to add the style for the input type you can say right now this is not looks good so for that we need to copy this class name input box and after that we need to select here the input which is the input type password and inside of that we have to add bunch of and instead of that first we, we have to add bunch of properties so the first thing is i'm going to add the width to 100 percent so it's going to take up the 100 percent width now the button is actually appearing in the second row but we want to display the button inside it inside of it so we are going to handle it once we complete the style for this input box next we need to add the property which is height because right now the height is very small so it is going to be 60 pixel then we need to add the padding so padding from top is going to be 0 pixel top and bottom and from left and right is going to be 20 pixel and after that we need to add the border so border is going to be 1 pixel it is going to be a solid border and then we need a color so we actually going to use this color which is a little bit of dark gray you can see that the light dark gray then we need to use the outline. So outline is going to be none. 
and after that we need to add the color because we are using here a dark color so we need to use a white color for the font and after that we need to add the border radius property so these properties are already explaining their meaning that is i am not showing you the output by pressing the control s because these are very common properties and very easy to remember then we need to use here a font like the size property which is 16 pixel and after that i am going to use here a background property so background is going to be transparent if i control save it then you can see the input type style is actually changed so our next step is to style the button so here come back and then we need to select the button so i'm going to directly select the button selector so inside of this button we need to add the width of 3 pixel and the height of 3 pixel so width is going to be 3 pixel and height is also going to be 3 pixel if i did that then you can the size of the button is actually shrinks and after that we need to actually set the background so background so actually we have shrink the height and width of the button the image it's going to be shrink from all the sides so before applying this property you can see there is a square is appearing at the corner of this particular button this is actually a button inside of the button we are displaying the image so this gray is actually a button so when we are actually going to reduce the size of the button so it's going to only display the image because the size of the image is actually little bigger than the 3 pixel so here again inside the button i am going to add here width property which is 3 pixel that i have already typed then height is going to be 3 pixel and after that we need to use the background so background is going to be transparent if i control save it and show you the output you can see the button is actually a 3 by 3 pixel but the image is little bigger so we want to style the image but first i am going to complete the code for the button and after that we want to remove the border of the button which is none and then we need to add here outline which is also going to be none and then we need to use the border radius so border radius is going to be 50 percent not 5 is going to be 50 percent if i control save it and uh, actually i'm going to here select the image first so button instead of that we have image and inside of the image i'm going to specify the width property which is going to be 35 pixel if i save it then you can see now the image is actually very small and after that coming back to the button selector code inside of that we need to add some more code so the first code is actually we want to change the cursor to pointer and then we need to add the position property so position is going to be absolute and then we need to add the top properties because we have specified the position property so it is going to be like 16 percent and then it is going to be like left is like 85 percent and then we are going to use the transform property so transform translate y is going to be like minus 48 percent if i control save it now you can see that the button is actually appearing inside the input type that what actually we want now the next step is we need to add the style code for this message so coming back to the visual studio code and inside of that we have to write here a selector name which is message and inside of that first we need to add the position node position is going to be absolute absolute and after that we need to add the margin top property so from margin top is going to be like 5 pixel and then we need to add the color so color is going to be white because the background color is very dark that is the reason and then we need to add the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel and after that we need to add the display so display is going to be none at this point of time so if you save it then it will see nothing better if i just remove the display property right now then you can see now it's actually appearing white so why are we actually setting the display to none because when we initially launch the application if you see it here if i remove it then you will see the text is actually the message is actually hided that is because it is done with the use of display none so we are going to update this display property with the use of the javascript 
so that is the reason I have added here a display none property. Okay, so that marks the completion of the code for the CSS part of this password strength checker application. So our next step is to start with the JavaScript part. So let's get started with the JavaScript part of the project. So for that we need to use the script.js file and inside of the script.js file we need to fetch the IDs of these particular elements then the ID of our password input type and the ID of our submit and then this ID of the span. So we need to actually get the IDs of all of these particular elements. So coming back to the script.js file. So first I'm going to here create the const and this is for the password. And then here we need to use the document dot get element by id and this one is going to store the password means the reference of the password okay so there we have specified the password which is this one so the next we need to fetch the message which is our this particular paragraph element and then we also need to fetch the strength so I'm going to shift and alt pressing the alt key and then pressing the down arrow key means shift alt and pressing the down arrow key to actually duplicate the line of code. Then here it is actually a message. Then this is also a message and this one is actually our strength and this one is our strength 2 means the strength id not strength 2 and then we need to fetch the this particular button so this is actually doesn't have any id but it has a type submit so we are going to use the query selector instead of get element by id so again typing here the const then we need to use this submit button the variable name okay and then after that we need to use the document dot query selector instead of that we need to specify the name of the selector so this is our button and once we actually bind all the elements inside the javascript it's time to add the event listener to this password input type so we want to listen to the input of the password so here we need to specify the variable name password then add event listener instead of that we need to add the event listener which is a input event so we want to listen to the input as soon as we enter the data we want to display the strength and weakness inside the message okay so next we need to add here a function so then we need to define the body of the function and inside of that i need to create two variables so first we need to create a const this will be our password value and this is equal to password value that will be entered to the input type no like this one actually is the value then we need the password length which is equal to password dot length the value that we are getting it in in this particular variable we are going to just simply calculating the length because whatever value entered in this particular input type it is going to be treated as an array because string is like traversable so we can treat the string as array through the indexing that is why this length property we have used here okay so once we create these two variables the next step is we need to create the string variable which is actually going to update it that is why we need to use the let keyword because const is for the constants and that is when we want to change the value so this will be the strength value because this value is going to be changed multiple time depending upon the condition that is why we need to use here a let so this is actually an empty string so we need to check here for the conditions if the conditions is actually true then we want to display the data means true and false condition so we need to use multiple if conditions so the first thing is when the password is actually equal to equal to zero so in that time we want to actually display the strength value so in that time the strength value is going to be an empty string which is obvious so just using this single quotations okay so and after that if it is not equal to means there is some data inside this password input so in that case 
we need to use the else if condition we need to handle that condition so instead of the else if we need to check for the password length whether it is smaller than 5 so if it is smaller than 5 we need to assign the strength value variable a value which is weak because the 5 length password is a weak password then i'm going to copy this one and paste it one more time if the password length is uh, like uh, smaller than 6 or you can yeah, use this 6 as well actually i need to use a 6 then it is like uh, 10 you can use 5 7 whatever the minimum weak length password you want in your project and then this is going to be medium so this one is medium and then the else condition you can add multiple conditions i'm just going to give you the just basic conditions so then the password is going to be i if it is if the password length is more than 10 then the password is going to be strong all right so this is for all the if conditions and after that we need to set the strength value to this particular strength text also so for that we need to update its value so strength dot we need to update its text content so text content is equal to strength value after doing this we need to actually just to, if you go to the css where we have the message we need to set the message to display block instead of none so coming back to the script.js so here we are going to do this by adding the message because we have a reference to the message message dot style and then we need to update its display we are actually updating the style property through javascript and then we need to set set it to block so here i will be writing a one comment display the message okay so now the code for the done so i think this particular password variable value is actually not used here because once we get the value so here we need to actually use the password value that is why it is actually little bit uh, like light color than the value because if it is not used just if i undo that then you can see it is little bit uh, like lighter color than this one that doesn't have so this id actually gives us the information so here again i'm going to use the password value so if i control save it and coming back to the output of the browser means the output screen so if i here type any values so you can see now the password is smaller than six so now i'm going to enter the characters now the password is in medium because we have entered here seven characters now the password is strong now our next functionality when we click on this button we want to show the text that is inside of this input type okay and then you can see you can actually change some positions because right now this button is actually not at the horizontally center to this input type you can change it in the css part for adding the show functionality we need to set the listener to this button copy this variable name and coming back to the functions at the end of this function so first i'm going to paste the name and then we need to use the add event listener function of javascript instead of that we want to listen to the click event of the function so click then we need to specify the function and then its brackets so instead of that first we need to create the password type so const a variable of password type is actually equals to password so the variable that is this one we are actually using that password dot get attribute so we need to update its attribute value which is the type attribute so we are actually assigning the type to this variable and after that we need to check for the condition because we are going to set the attribute value so again here typing the password type this is the password type is equal to so we need to strictly check for the type and the value also so that is the reason we have used here this value so if it is equal to password value if password type is equal to password so we are actually checking for this input where is the input this is 
we are targeting this one if the type is equal to password then we are actually going to set the password to an attribute so we are going to use a set attribute instead of that we need to change the text property means the type not the text it is actually the type we want to change the type to text so again inside the single quote if it is equal to password then we need to check set the type to text if in the else condition we want to perform the reverse of it if it is not password means if it if the type of this attribute if is not password means if text then we are going to set it to text right now when the we run the application it is the type is password so when we click on it then this particular if block executed and it's going to change the type of the password to text so we can see the text in the else part we want to set the reverse of it by just changing it here to password all right so if i save it and if i come back to the browser if i click it here by entering the some data then you can see you can now see the values okay so now our application is working fine so that marks the completion of this particular password strength checker application so if you like this course then leave a review because your review is definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to start the creation of password generator application which is a random password generator application so this is the final application that we are going to build in this entire module so you can see it has this password generator heading so if i click on this generate password button then we are actually generating a random password of length 10 and this password generator has a copy functionality so if i click on the copy by coming back to next tab and this will be paste it then you can see this is the 57 and this is the password is copied and also when we uncheck this include upper case then if we are only generating the password with lower case letters and numbers if i check all of these four check boxes and click on generate then we are actually generating a 10 length password of by combining upper case lower case and numbers and symbols if i increase the length of the password to 25 like 30 then now we are actually generating a very strong password of 30 length character so this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module our first step is to start with the html part of the project so our first step is to start with the html part of this random password generator application so for that i have already created the three files index.html style.css and script.js file instead of that i have already linked my css file and also my javascript file but before moving forward we also need to add the google icons if i show you the final application the copy functionality icon that is this one is actually coming from the google icons so if i generate the password and if i click on copy then you can see this particular is checked so these all icons are actually coming from the google fonts icon so from the google fonts website that is this one search on the search bar of your browser google fonts the first link will be appear which is fonts.google.com simply click on this website so it will takes you to this particular landing page and from there click on the icons and from there select the material icons and instead of that search the icon that you want to use so i want to use the copy icon so i'm going to select the copy then click on this content copy and then click on this instruction how we can use this particular icon inside our project and after that just simply copy this line of code copy it and coming back to your visual studio code so at the end of this link tag paste your code here and after that you need to close this link tag also and also the style one then simply control save it so now the google icons is now imported to our project now we can use it So if you want to use the icons just coming back to the browser and coming back to this icons page so if you select this icon and here you can see the span class of the google material icon so we are going to come back to this website once we add the elements to our project which is a random password generator application okay also i'm going to change the viewport of my particular visual studio and the browser 
so that I can see the output and inputs simultaneously. So I can just simply change this window to this like this structure. So it will become easy for me to type the code and also show you the output because this project is heavily based on the CSS and there are like a lots of elements that we need to style. You can see there are almost plenty of elements and we need to actually style it with the use of CSS. So that is the reason I can show you the output quickly because if I just simply changing these windows from Visual Studio Code to browser like this one and then again coming back to Visual Studio Code, it will take a lot of time for the completion of this project. So that is the reason I am actually going to use with this particular layout structure. Okay, so for the first element that we want to add is the container. So everything that you will see this white portion is actually a container. So everything will be placed inside this container. So first we need to add the container inside our HTML file. So here first I am going to press the dot key and then I will be adding the container and then pressing the tab key. Now inside of the container we need to place every other element. So the first element is the h1 element which is the heading. So the heading is our password generator application or you can just simply write the password generator. So you can see as soon as I just simply hit the control save the password generator is now printed to the web browser that is because of the plugin which is a go server live plugin. So this process will save a lot of time and I can teach the code more quickly to you. Now the next element that we want to add is actually the division element which is the input box. So if I just show you the final product, this is actually an input box. Inside of that we have this copy icon. Okay, so coming back to the Visual Studio Code again. So inside of that we need to add the another div. So I am pressing the dot key, then input box. Pressing the tab key to complete the code from the emit abbreviation. And inside of that we need to add the input type which is going to be text because we want to generate the password. So the password is actually a text because we don't want to hide and toggle the password. We just want to show the text so that the user can copy the password and use it wherever the user want. Then we need to add the class. So class is going to like pass box. And then we need to add the add another selector. This one is used for the JavaScript portion. Now you must be seeing that the class is also pass box and the height is also a pass box. The reason for that because it is a small project so I am giving it the same name. But in the real world project you don't need to do that if you are actually combining this password generator to something like in a big website. So from there you need to give a different class name. The next thing we need if I control save it then you can see right now I can enter the text inside this particular input type. So to avoid the user to enter the data inside this input type we need to add here a disabled attribute. If I control save it now you can see I cannot enter the data inside this particular input type. That is also this particular feature is also available inside the main application. You can see I cannot enter the data inside this input type. So that thing is achieved with the use of this disabled attribute. The next we need to add the Google material icon for this one. That is this particular one. So for that coming back to the website of the Google fonts. So from there you need to select this copy content and copy this one. So simply click copy here and after that minimize it and coming back to the Visual Studio Code, simply going to paste the code here. And if I save it then you can see content copy, the icon is not appearing. The reason for that is you just need to remove this outline one. If I control save it then you can see now the icon is visible to the screen. So that is for the first row of the application means we are actually targeting this particular project in multiple rows. This is the first row we have done. Next we need to actually add this range bar. So for that coming back to the Visual Studio code again and also minimize the final output to actually see the output screen inside my Chrome browser. So here we need to add the input type. Now this range bar is actually independent than the other div. It is directly placed inside the this container. So this will be the first child of the container, this will be the second child of this div container and this will be the like a third child of this particular container. So instead of input type text, we need to add here a range. And then we need to add the minimum value to this particular range bar which is 10. 
and then we need to add the max value so which is actually 30 and after that we need to add the value by default the value is also going to be 30 because this value is going to be retrieved inside the javascript also then we need to add the input which is our input slider the id not input mode the id because we need to fetch the id of this input type range inside the javascript so when we drag it then we want to update the value that is the reason we need to here provide the id so that we can use it to bind it with the javascript code so here i will be giving the name input slider once i did that the, if i control save it then you can see we have this nice range bar inside the html part of the project which is the password generator application after that i'm going to just zoom out a little bit so that you can see the code more clearly next we need to add another div of class name row so simply pressing the dot key and then we need to type the name of the class which is row pressing the tab key then we get the div tag and instead of this div first we are going to add the paragraph element that actually going to display the password length that is for the this particular one we are going to create first this one this is for the paragraph element and this one be done with the use of span tag so come minimizing it and coming back to visual studio code again so this particular text is going to be just uh, static so it is not going to be updated the next we need to add the span element span and then we need to provide the id here so the id is going to be like a slider slider i value so i'm going to here use the camel case typing and then the minimum value you can add is like 10 because we want to also give the style sheet code that is the reason so i'm going once we complete the style sheet part then i'm going to review this code because we are going to update this value dynamically with the use of this input range and after giving this row the next again we need to add the same class name of row so again i am going to type here row and at this point of time this one is going to be like this one first we are going to create this one then we are going to create copies of into multiple times first we create this particular part and then we are going to copy it into three times to actually save a little bit of time so first i am going to here type the label and the label is actually this one is for the lower case lower case and then we need to add the text here which is include lower case letters and instead of that we need to add the a to z this is the content is added so this particular label is static so that is why it doesn't have any id and class next we need to add the input type so input type this is going to be a checkbox checkbox we need to press the enter key here checkbox and then we need to name this as the lower case so the smaller one and after that we need to provide the id so id is going to be lower case and then we need to set its default state right now you can see we can check or uncheck this particular one if we set the value to check which we actually want it then you can see it's actually checked so we give the value when we click on it is going to be unchecked as i already told you we're going to copy this into three more times first i'm going to create the first copy and then i'm going to modify its content first then I will create the another copy otherwise the code will be messed up and will become difficult to update so here is inside of that I will be adding here uppercase and then this is one of our like uppercase letters and similarly I need to update it even I can use the plugin of the features of the visual studio code which is a multi cursor feature okay so now we get the uppercase as well the only thing we need to change here capital a to capital z once i save it then you can see the second row is also created similarly for the numbers again we need to create the copy here and at this point of time i'm going to use the visual studio cursor functionality to actually delete all of this multiple times and then i will be here typing the numbers okay so it's going to update the value directly into multiple positions then we need to here change the value to 0 to 9 and then this is going to be numbers 
okay so now we are getting the third case as well which is the number so it is actually here capital c we don't want to use the camel case typing here it is just for the upper case letters next again i'm going to create the copy of it for the special symbols so again i'm going to press the alt key and then pressing the alt key here and also click it here then pressing the delete key and here i will be typing these symbols symbols and then also change this one to symbols and then we need to provide the special characters here like uh, add the rate to asterisk okay so the row procedure is completed the next we need to add the button that is this one generate password button so this is the last element and also this is going to be inserted inside this container because everything will be wrapped inside this container so coming back to the at the end of the include symbols letters so here we also need to change the text this is not letters this will just include numbers we can add the characters if we want but uh, i don't want to use it Control save it then you can see now it's actually looking great now the last element that we want to place is the button element so this is going to be button then inside of this button i'm going to add the text which is our generator new generator this is actually generate password so this will be the button then we need to specify the type so type of this button is going to be button and then we need to add the class to this button which is our get btn and then we need to add here id again which is get btn so now the application is completed for the html part so our next step is to start with the CSS part. So now it's time to start with the CSS part of this particular application, which is our password generator application. So for that, we need to use the style.css file, and I have already linked my style.css file with this particular line of code. So coming back to the style.css file, so first we are going to reset the like a universal selector means the basic padding and margin of the browser we are going to reset it by using the universal selector so padding is going to be zero from all side and then margin is also going to be zero from all side and then we need to provide the box sizing so box sizing is going to be border box and then we need to provide here a font family font family i will be using here arial Helvetica. if i do that then you can see the font of the project is changed then we need to add the style for the body element so the body element so first i am going to provide the display to flex and then i need to provide the justify content which is going to be center actually we need to press the enter key and then we need to provide the align items it is also going to be center so you can see now it is actually appearing at the center of the browser so you can see how quickly is actually to see the output with this particular layout this is going to save a lot of time and also it is going to help me to write the css code more quickly so i actually zoom out zoom in a little bit so that i can show the code of the css more accurately to you okay so after that we need to add here the another property which is min height property so min height is going to be 100 bh which is the 100 percent of the viewport now you can see the application is now at the center of the browser and after that we need to add the here a background color so the background color i will be using here is like d4 d4 and d4 this is a gray background that we actually want to apply to our background of the body then the next element that we want to give this style is the container remember the main container in which everything is added if i show you the output this will be the main container we need to provide the black color box shadow all of these properties so coming back to the standard css so i'm going to here type the container and then starting with pair of curly brackets and inside of that the first property is actually going to specify the max width 
So max width is going to be like 500 pixel. If I do that, then we need to add the another property which is the border radius. So border radius is going to be 100%. Not 100%, it is going to be a circle. Actually, I have specified here a wrong property. 100% is not, it is actually a 5 pixel. And then we need to add the background color first so that we can see the border radius in action. So this will be the white color. Then you can see the perfect rounded corner border is actually appearing. And after that we need to add the padding. So padding from top and bottom is going to be 40 pixel. Then from left and right is going to be 30 pixel. Once I did it then you can see the browser is actually means the project is actually now appearing. You can see the final one is actually a bigger than this one because we need to also apply the style to these all elements. Coming back to the Visual Studio Code again and after that we need to add the box shadow. So box shadow is going to be like 2 pixel, then 2 pixel, then the blurness which is going to be 10 pixel, then I will be using the RGBA function 0, 0, 0 for the green, 0 for the blue and for the alpha it is going to be 0 0.1. Then you can see there is a nice blurness border at the back of this particular card. So that marks the completion of the code for the container. So the next step is to start the code for the container h1 element. So I am going to copy this container and coming back at the here and then I will be adding here h1 which is a heading tag element. Then starting its curly brackets and then here we need to first add the font size. So the font size I am going to change it to 24 pixel. Then the next property we need to add is the font weight. So these are some different properties, everyone is different. I just want to just decrease the size of the font of the H1 element a little bit. Now coming back to the Visual Studio Code again, after the font weight bold, the next property that we want to add is the margin bottom property. So from margin bottom is going to be 36 pixel and then we need to add the text alignment is going to be center and then we need to add the color so color is going to be hashtag 3333 six times 3 this will change the color of the password generator if you want to change you can just go with the different color i just use the light black colors a little bit then we need to add the text decoration it is going to be like uh, underline so that's marks the completion of the code for the container h1 element the next we need to add the CSS style for the input box which is this one right now so we have added the class input box so input box if I cross check it inside the HTML so if we just uh, here you can see we have the class input box that is this one we want we are going to style this particular division coming back to the CSS then starting its pair of curly brackets so instead of that first we need to add the position which is going to be relative so position relative and after that once I did it then you can see nothing is changed then I need to add here a margin property which is margin from bottom is going to be 24 pixel because right now the range bar and the input type is very close to each other so if I did it then you can see there is a difference of the space between these two and after that we need to add the input box span if you see you can see that there is an input box then we have this span element which is a material icon so we are going to provide the style for that one so this is just i am going to copy this one input box and then closing its curly bracket and inside of that we need to select the span element and then inside of that first property is going to be position that is absolute so you can see now they are actually appearing very straight to this particular line position absolute because if we don't specify the position absolute then you can see they are actually not perfectly aligned horizontally to align horizontally we need to provide the position absolute property after that we need to add here a property now we can use the top property because we have used the positions so it is going to be top from 50 percent 
and then we need to add the right property as well so right is going to be like 12 percent okay so this is now is placed then after that we need to add the another property which is transform translate so we want to translate it to the y direction which is minus 50 percent so now it is actually at the perfectly at the center now you can see we need to actually display this input type inside this particular input type means we want to display this copy icon inside this input type like this one because we are going to increase the like width of this one input type okay so this is the code for the translation and transform after that we need to add the color to this one so we are going to use the color property so color is going to be like again 333 save it and after that we need to add the font size so font size is going to be like 35 pixel so actually 35 pixel is too big here i need to add here 20 pixel 20 pixel looks great then we need to change the cursor to pointer so when we hover over it then it means the we can click on it which indicates the I also change the cursor the next we need to add the style code for the pass box so the pass box is our input type if you see this is the id so we are going to use the class selector not the id one the id one is used for the javascript purpose so coming back to this style.css and pasting the code of the class name which is pass box then starting its curly pair of packets inside of that first we need to add the width so the width is actually is going to take the 100 percent if i did it then you can see it's actually taking up the 100 percent width then we need to add the height so height is going to be 40 pixel and after that we need to add the padding property so padding is going to be like 8 pixel after adding the padding property to 8 pixel the next property that we want to add is the border radius property so border radius is going to be 4 pixel and if i control save it then you can see the nice rounded border corner of this input type and after that we need to add the font size property so font size is going to be 16 pixel and then we need to add the font weight so font weight is going to be like 700 okay and then after that we need to add the background color so background color is going to be f2 f2 and f2 which is for the lighter variation of the gray color and then we need to add the color which is again same like this color so i'm going to copy it and pasting it here if i save it and then we need to add the outline so if i use the outline and the outline is going to be none if i save it and if i increase the size then you can see this particularly looks great okay so once we click it then we need to place it here like it is not a uh, like at the there is a lot of space at the right side so coming back to the input type span here is our input type span so here we can add like eight percent or i can go with the four percent now four percent looks great here now that's it perfect okay so that's not the code for the pass box now we have to provide the style for this one if i just zoom out a little bit here so then we can see the code clearly now we need to provide the style for this input type slider okay so we need to actually i am going to minimize the browser window a little bit more then i'm going to increase the size of the visual studio window which is zoom in the window of the visual studio code so our next step is to provide the style for this input type range so providing the style for this input type range we need to here use the input type selector so input then we need to start the square brackets and instead of that we need to provide the type so type is equal to inside the double quotes we need to provide the range then instead of that it is going to be the width is going to 100% if i save it now you can see the width of the input type is actually increased and then for the other elements now coming back to the css 
and for the other elements like uh, we want to style these one so coming back to the index.html so we have these rows so we are going to provide the code for these rows so coming back to the css here i am going to type the dot row and then starting its curly pair of brackets so instead of dot row first we need to add the property that is going to be display flex if i save it then you can see all of them are now actually appearing very close to each other and also in the single line and after applying the flex property the next is we need to apply the justify content space between if i use it now you can see they are actually placed left and right to the container means inside the container they are placed left and right then the another property that i want is the margin property to actually provide some spacing between all of them so for that we need to add the margin so margin bottom is going to be 15 pixel now they have the spaces and after that we need to add the margin top as well which is a 15 pixel again so that there is a difference between the range bar or this label which is a password length means the paragraph element and then inside the row again i am going to here type the row then we need to set the paragraph element style so we need to increase its font weight to 700 so that it will looks like a little bit bolder so after providing the code to this paragraph element which is password length the next step is we need to provide the style for this generate button which is our generate password so the class name for this one actually is a get btn so we need to copy this class name from here and pressing the dot key and then pasting the name of this get btn and instead of that first we need to specify the width so width is going to be 100 percent if i save it then you can see the width is actually increased and after that we need to provide the padding so padding from top is going to be like 12 pixel and from left and right is going to be zero or i can add here like a pixel if i just remove this zero one then see what will happen things will remain same so zero is actually not required i have just typed the mistake only so then we need to remove the border to none and then we need to add the border radius to 4 pixel and after that we need to add the font size font size 16 pixel font weight is going to be bold and after that we need to add the color color that is going to be white color I save it and you can see it is not visible because we need to change the background color so background color is going to be hashtag 3162CB if I save it then you can see now we have this nice looking blue color and after that we need to add the cursor to pointer and next we need to add the margin top property which is going to be 30 pixel then we need to also apply the code to this button which is the hover button code so pasting the code and then closing its curly bracket then add a error like hover effect and then we need to change the background color so the background color is going to be like a black or i can just go with the different black 1 d1 and this is going to be e20 save it if i just hover over it then you can see the color is now changed to black now you can see the entire password container is actually little smaller than as compared to the output one if i see this one is actually not uh, like the output one that we want to build so to fix this issue there is a problem i think inside the container i have missed some property if i just simply again minimize the layout and coming back to the container so here i have actually not added a one property that is actually the width property so we need to add the width to 100 percent and then we need to override the max width because we are going to width and then we need to override it so if i just remove this max width then it's going to take up the whole space of the container but uh, then we can add or increase the padding from left and right 
but instead or we can do a margin like this property margin from top and bottom and from left and right is going to like auto if i can do that like this one otherwise i am going to use my own approach so note it's not going to solve the problem so to solve this issue we need to use the max width so max width i am going to specify here 500 pixel then you can see now they are actually looks like the same with the product that we actually built so both of them are now identical this is the final one that we want to build and this is the one that we have created in this entire css module but still there is a slight difference between these two the difference there you can see the range bar if i select it then you can see this range bar is actually you can see the edge and now if i just simply show you this one this range bar is actually as ended where these particular are aligned so these are aligned just inside of the edge of the range bar if i want to say that and this one is actually aligned just at the edge of the range bar so in order to do this like with the same even we can leave it as it is because that looks almost fine so we have to add the css for the like checkboxes like input type checkbox and we can add the margin right property to this one so if i want to do that like if i just come back to the visual studio code again so here input type range and where we have the input type checkboxes so if i just go with the after the rows so here if i just type here another like input type i'm going to copy this so it will save the little bit of time input type and then here we need to specify the checkbox and then we need to provide the margin property so margin right is going to be 8 pixel if i did it then you can see now the checkboxes are actually slightly under the line of this range bar means this entire vertical line now we need to separately assign a like a margin property to this particular span element so we have applied the id to the span element so where is coming back to the visual studio one this is actually after the slider so this is the slider then we have this is the span element so we can add the style to this slider value directly so if i come back at the end here we can add the has symbol then pasting the name of the element selector and then we can add here a margin right property which is going to be 7 pixel so now they are actually now look like almost same means perfectly at the same so that is how we have actually slightly changed the position of these all four checkboxes and also this span element which is a slider value with the use of the css even you can leave it is because without using this one and also these selector that looks almost good is totally up to you i show you the way so that is for the css part of the password generator application so our next step is to start with the javascript part so now it's time to start with the javascript part of the password generator application so for that we need to use the script.js file so instead of that first we need to get the ids of the elements which is our input type this slider bar these checkboxes this length of the password and the button so we have to create a bunch of variables so let's start doing it one by one so first we need to create here a variable of type const means i need to specify the const and then first is going to be like our input slider input slider and then we need to use the document dot get element by id so here inside of the double quotes we need to specify the id of the input slider so this is our input slider so i'm going to copy the name of the id and i will be pasting it here after that we need to actually create a duplicate of this one so i'm going to press the shift plus alt key and the down arrow key and then we need to change the variable name to slider value so this slider value then we need to get the element id so this slider value is our this one which is the this particular element which is the span element this one so we are going to copy the id and i'm going to paste it here then the next thing again we need to create the duplicate of it and then this one is going to be our pass box which is our input box so this one 
then the id of this input type is actually pass box so i am going to copy the id and i am going to paste it here and after that i need to create the duplicate of it again then we need to create here another variable which is lowercase el so lowercase el is actually for the lowercase element that is actually this particular one lowercase this is checkbox so again coming back to the index.html lowercase element like uh, this one so we need want to copy the id of this particular one coming back to the script.js and again pasting it then i'm going to actually duplicate into three more times now this is for the like our uppercase and this is for the number number el and this is for the symbols all right then we need to change the corresponding name so uppercase because i know that the spellings are properly correct then here we need to add the numbers and this one is our symbols so now we have fetched the ids of all of the four checkboxes the last element we want to fetch the id is actually our button so again i need to create a copy of it because we have also specified the id inside this button that is get btn so i'm going to copy the id name then i'm going to replace it here and then also here we need to add the generate btn so that is for all the ids is now fetched so the next step is to we need to create the four variables so the first variable is our lowercase that has some lowercase characters then the second variable is going to be our uppercase that has some uppercase letters lowercase letters then uppercase letters and similarly here i have made a typo this is actually a const now spelling is same because we have not specified here a terminator and then we need to another variable that we want to create is actually for the numbers and then we need uh, another variable of the symbols okay so these all are actually i have already typed into my notepad because it is a very long running task i will say it's become like a time consuming task so i'm going to copy these four lines of code these four variable declaration you can see that this is the code that we actually want we want to type the whole 26 alphabet in small case then 26 alphabet in uppercase then 10 characters of numeric and then these all special symbols so instead of typing it you can just simply copy and paste it or you can just simply google it it will save a lot of time because i don't want to type it and i don't want to consume my 10 to 20 minutes just typing this whole variables content so after specifying the variables we need to add the listener to the button we need to add the listener to this our generate button so first i'm going to copy the variable name of the generate button pasting it then we need to add the event listener and instead of that we need to first listen to the click event listener click event listener and we need to provide an arrow function here and instead of that we need to open its bracket so actually we need to add here a comma it's actually not happy okay and then we need to create here a function that is generate password so first we need to update the value of the pass box value so pass box dot value we want to update the value of the pass box is equal to generate password so this will be the function that we need to create so here at the end of this particular we need to create the function so we need to use the function keyword generate password then to start its round brackets then the opening and curly brackets of the function but before adding code inside of this function we need to first get the value of the slider otherwise the things will become little complicated because the value of the slider is the main thing according to which the password length will be determined 
means the password length value is totally dependent on this slider value. If the value is not increased, then it is going to always give the 10 length password. So we have the access to the input slider. So first here we need to show the value to this particular span element which is the slider value. So we are going to here use the slider value dot text content. We need to update the paragraph element content by using the text content and instead of that we need to use the input slider dot value. Then we need to update the value of this particular slider. So according to the slider we need to update the value. Alright, so for that we need to use here again input slider add event listener. So we are going to listen to the input event of the range bar which is this slider or I can say that the range bar in terms of the HTML. Then we need to here specify the arrow function again for the more readability of the code than the block of the arrow function. Instead of that we need to add the slider value dot text content. Again this is this particular one is used to get the current value of the slider and this is will be used to update the get the updated value of the slider. So text content then is equal to input slider dot value. So if I did it and if I just update the value now you can see the value of the this slider value element is updating according to the value of this range bar. So this is we have done with the slider part and now we need to get the value of this to actually generate the password. So we need to specify the code inside this generate function. We have already called the function here call the function. So our first thing is we need to get the length because we need to use the loops so that we can generate the password. So first thing we need to get the length because I already told you the value of the password which is this input type is heavily dependent on the value of this slider value according to this range bar. So that I already explained you. So here we need to create a variable length is equal to and then we need to use the input slider dot value. So we are actually getting the value of the input slider and saving it inside the length variable which is a local variable for this generate password. And after that we need to create the two variables of let type means we are going to use the let because this because the value of these variables will be changed many times. That is the reason we are not going to use here const. So this is actually a characters and it is actually of type empty string. Now what this character will does it is going to hold the input checks of all of these four character types. So if you selected these three then is going this character variable will hold the value of these strings means it is going to hold these all 26, 26 and all these 10 characters means just adding these all 26 characters alongside with this means all of these values are hold by this variable. And after that we need to create the another variable which is the password that is a main password variable that is going to hold the password value. Okay and then we need to add the conditions whether we the input type is checked or not means the, these checked input types checked or not. So here we need to use the character variables that we have created at the top. So I am going to use here a short syntax for the assignment of the values of the variable then I am going to use the lowercase characters. So make sure you need to use here a lowercase element not characters lowercase element if it is checked if it is checked this is actually the attribute if it is checked then we need to add here a ternary operator which is a question mark then we need to assign the value to lowercase if it is checked then we want to assign the this particular value otherwise we want to leave it as the empty string. Okay, this is the condition that we have used for the lowercase. Similarly, we need to use these same condition for the other three as well. So here we need to update it to uppercase el, uppercase el, and then this one is going to be number. So this is number element, and this one is going to be symbols element. Right. 
and after that we need to update the value of the error characters variable which is uppercase letters this one is our numbers not el it is a numbers and this one is our symbols so now we have checked the conditions for all of these four input type checkboxes after that we need to use the loop so we are going to use here a for loop which is a traditional for loop so for the counter i'm going to use the let variable i and is equal to going to specify the zero and then i need to apply the condition so the loop is actually dependent on the length variable that is why we have actually used here a length variable so here we need to use the length and after the length we need to increment the counter of variable which is i plus plus and inside of that we need to use the variable password so password that is this variable password is equal to so again i am going to use here a short syntax for the assignment and addition the value inside it so it is going to be like uh, characters the variable that we have created at the top characters and this password is this one characters and then we need to use the caret function so that whatever index or random number we are getting it we want to print the value of the character because caret function whatever numeric value you will provide here index it is going to print the character so if you see that it returns a character at the specified index if you hover over it with this particular function so instead of that we need to use the math dot floor function so that we get a positive whole number because our integers can be negative or positive so we want a positive numbers that is why we are here using the floor so it is again math dot random so we are going to use the math dot random function to multiply it with the characters the characters value if all of these character values conditions are true then the character will have all the these characters will be saved so whatever suppose if these two characters are checked like if i just remove it so suppose these 26 characters and these 26 so total 52 characters are will be stored inside this character variable so that value we need to multiply it with the random function so characters dot length so it is going to return a one character for the first one and then it is going to initialize it at the password variable all right and then i'm going to console log it so that i can show you the how the iteration is actually executing instead of that we need to pass the password variable now the generate password function code is completed the only thing we need to do is actually we need to return the data so that we can display it inside this input box so return we need to return a password because we are actually using this inside this pass dot value even we can add this entire code inside of this arrow function but i have separated the logic by just calling the another function you can just place this code inside the arrow function as well if you want now control save it if i come back to my browser and if i just maximize the screen increase the length if i just click on generate password you can see now the password is generated if i include the special symbols now the special symbols are also appearing if i remove the numbers then you can see the now numbers is not appearing if i remove the uppercase then you can see now we are getting the password with lowercase character and symbols if i increase the length of the password then you can see we are getting more complex password then i also want to show you the console.log so i am pressing the f12 key going back to the console so you can see if i just refresh it and here if i just increase it and you can see on first run we are getting the h character on the second run we are getting the 6 character on the third run of the loop that is uh, this particular loop that is executing so on the fourth run we are getting this character and so on at the 13th we are getting this so if we simply count these particular like iterations 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so perfectly our password is generated after the 13th length so that is for the generate password so our next step is to add the functionality for the copy because right now we are successfully able to generate the password 
but we want to copy the password so that when we paste it inside it then we can get the password so for that we need to add the code for the copy so we need to add the listener to this one also we need to get the reference at the top to the copy icon so if i go to the index.html so here we need to add the id element that is copy icon Alright, so we need to add this id and then we need to fetch the id inside the script.js also i need to save the index.html i'm coming back to the script.js also just minimize the window of the browser and after that here we need to create another const then pasting the name copy icon is equal to document dot get element by id instead of that we need to paste the id name that is copy icon once i save it and then we need to add a listener to this copy icon so we want to handle the click listener of this copy icon so copy icon dot add event listener instead of that we need to handle the click listener and then i'm going to define an arrow function then starting the body of the arrow function and then inside of that we need to add the code so first we need to check for the value if pass value which is our input type pass value is not equal to empty string okay because we don't want to copy the empty string value or we need to check for the condition pass box value dot length is actually greater than the minimum length of the password so i'm going to use here a 10 because right now the minimum value of the range bar is 10 if you specify the minimum value of the range bar 8 then you can check for the condition 8 if you specify the 1 then you can check here change the condition to 1 okay because the minimum password i want is the tell length password and after that if, the, if either of these condition is like false means any of these condition is true like if the password is not empty which is true in these, this particular case because if this, this one has the password or the password is actually greater than the length of 10 means greater than or equal to the length of 10 then we want to copy the password into the navigator dot clipboard dot write text we are going to copy the text into the clipboard and then what we want to get it we want to get the value of the passbox dot value we want to copy the value of the passbox and after that we want to also update the copy icon to write so copy icon dot inner text is equal to we want to set it with the check okay so if i save it and I come back to my browser if i generate the password if i click it then you can see now the sign icon is appear so it means the password is copied so if i just come in back to google and paste it then you can see now the generated password is actually here appeared which is 2hr and 2hr now once the password is copied we want to set the value of this particular input type to actually empty and also we want to set this icon to again a copy icon after some time so for that we need to use the set timeout function so set timeout and inside of that we need to provide the curly brackets and then i am going to call it here a arrow function arrow function then we need to specify the body of this arrow function so inside of this one we need to add a copy icon again we need to change the copy icon dot inner html to a content copy if i just come back to index.html this is one we want to get it this again which is content copy so i'm going to paste it and if i save it and then if i come back to the browser again generate the password just click on the generate password so if i click on copy then you can see it's actually immediately changing that is because we have to here specify the interval time so after specifying the comma we have to specify here 3000 which is actually equal to 3 seconds 
So if I just again generate the password, if I copy it, then after some time this value is going to be changed. Then you can see now the icon is actually changed. So guys, that marks the completion of the code for this particular password generator application. So if you like this whole lecture series, then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses and also the quality of my future courses. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to build the age calculator application. So let me show you the application that we are going to build in this particular module. So this is the final application that we are going to build in this particular module. So you can see it has this input type where we have to add the data worth and then we have this calculate age button. So if I click on this, then I have already having this auto suggestion. If I select the data worth, so you need to enter the data worth in this particular format. If I click on this calculate age button, then you can see it's going to display this particular result in a form of list. So you can see this is actually showing the age, then we have this month passed, then weeks, then days, then hours, minutes, and then we also want to display the seconds. So this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the application which is age calculator. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the project which is age calculator. So I have already created the three files. This is index.html, style.css and script.js. So all of these files are empty except the index.html. I have already written the boilerplate code and also I have named my project age calculator and I have launched this application with the go live plugin inside my chrome browser. So you can see the age calculator heading is appear at the application tab. So the next thing I have already linked my CSS and the JavaScript file. So instead of this first we need to add a one container because if I show you the final application this, everything is actually wrapped inside the container and then we are going to place this h1 element then this actually a uh, form element then we need to provide this button and then this list is going to generate dynamically. But for the CSS purpose, we are going to add a first CSS part. Then we are going to comment out just like we have did in the previous projects as well. So the first thing is we need to add the container, which is a division. So coming back to the Visual Studio Code and first we need to add here a container. So this is our container and instead of that, first we need to add the H1 element. So our h1 element is going to just display the heading so it is age calculator and after that we need to add the input type so this is actually a form so here we need to use the form tag and inside the action first I am going to delete the action because it is not going to use any database so that is when the action is not required so we need to specify the id so id is going to age calculator and instead of that we need to add the form group so I am going to type here form hyphen group group and coming back to the front of this form group I need to also specify the dot and then I am going to press the tab key so it is going to give me a division actually the class name is outside of this particular division so I need to cut it cut this name and then paste it inside the double quotes and then I am going to press the enter key and then just remove the blank spaces and then inside of this form group it is going to have a label so this label is actually a static, it is not going to update. So if I show you, this is actually going to display the entire your birth date. So this is a label and then inside of this four, we need to add the birth date. And then we need to add the message, which I have already copied. And after that, we need to add the input type. So input, then the type is going to be text. And then we need to add the ID to birth date so here i have not used the input type as date of birth so we have used our text so we need to check the condition also inside the javascript for this particular type also so once we are start with the javascript part then i'm going to recall this concept of the type again so coming back to the id i need to complete the id name which is birth date and after that we need to add the placeholder text so placeholder we want to display the date inside this indian format which is ed mm and yy which is like a date and then the month name and then after that we need to apply the year so after this we need to add uh, another 
attribute here which is required so without this we are not going to perform any other operation okay so that is for the form group part of the project and then we need to just remove this extra spacing and then we need to create another form group so this is going to be a form group so i'm going to copy this division from here so this form group and also the closing tag is appeared by the visual studio then instead of that we need to add the button so inside of this button we need to specify the type to submit then after that inside of this we need to provide the text that will be visible to the button calculate age so you can see now once i control save it then you can see these elements is now appear inside our browser screen then our next step is for displaying the result that is for this one we need to add the result container and also we need to add the result as well so this is actually a result container in which all these elements will be placed and then there is another div division which is a result that will be used to hold this particular data so coming back to the visual studio code again so after the end of the form here we need to add the class name which is our result container so i'm going to specify the dot that is result container and then pressing the tab key and inside of that i need to specify the another class which is result because this is actually going to hold the data and then we also need to specify the ids inside of it because the id will be fetched inside the javascript so here we need to add the result container and after that we need to also specify the id to this result division also so the id to this one is going to be result And after that we need to add our divisions we are going to comment it out once we complete the code so this will be like our div and instead of that i need to add the class which is a result item so we need to press the enter key result then i'm going to specify the hyphen then item this is a result item instead of that we need to display the elements inside the h3 heading the h3 heading is like just we want to display the weeks and then after that we need to add the paragraph element this will be used to like age in weeks so this is actually a variable value that we are going to display inside the paragraph element okay so that's not the completion of the code if i control save it then you will see the week passed and age in weeks will be displayed inside the browser so that's not the completion of the code for the html so our next step is to start with the css code of the age calculator application So our next step is to start with the CSS part of the age calculator application. So for that we need to use the CSS file which is style.css. So here inside of that first we need to reset the default styling of the browser by using the universal selector. So here I will be using the asterisk and then starting the curly brackets of the asterisk which is a universal selector. So inside of that we need to remove the padding. So padding is 0 and then we need to add the margin. Margin is also going to be 0. Then I'm going to use the font family. So the font family that I'm using here, Arial. So this is a Arial sensory font. So you can see now the font is actually changed. If I can just simply remove it like this one. So this will be the font that we are going to use for this particular application. And also you can see the default padding and margin is reset. Then we are going to select the body of the web page. And instead of that, we need to add the background color, which is actually a linear gradient. So here we need to use the background and then we need to specify the linear gradient function. Instead of that we will be using a to right and then we need to add the color code which is AA7E66. This will be the color code we are going to use for this one and then we are going to use the FEP47B. So this will be the secondary color. If I control save it then you can see the intersection of these two colors. After that we need to add the code for the container so that we can set the container to the center of the screen. So for that we need to select the container class and then we need to start its opening and curly brackets and instead of that we need to add the width. So width is going to 600 pixel. Then we need to specify the margin property. So margin from top is going to be like 100 pixel and from left and right it is going to be auto. If I control save it then you can see right now the container is actually moved 
from the top to 100 pixel. So if I click on the maximize button, then you can see it is actually at the center of the browser screen. If I come back to the container class, then here we need to add the padding also. So first I'm going to add the background color so that we can see the result of the padding. Then here I will be using the F5, F5 and F5. If I save it, then you can see the light gray color. Then we need to add the padding. So padding will be 20 pixel from all sides. If I control save it, then you can see the padding is applied to the container. Then we need to add the border radius for the rounded corner. It is going to 8 pixel. And after that, we need to add the last property, which is the box shadow. So box sizing not, it is actually a box shadow. So instead of that, we need to use the 0 pixel, then 2 pixel. Then the blurness is going to be 4 pixel. Then it will be RGBA. RGBA, this will be the function name. Then it is going to 0, then 0, 0, and the alpha is going to be 0 0.2. If I control save it, then you will see there is a little bit of the shadow at the container. Then you can see now it is actually perfectly at the center of the screen. So, again, next step is we need to style this H1 element. So, coming back to the Visual Studio Code and type the H1 and then it's opening and curly pair of brackets. And after that, we need to use the text align property. So, first we need to align the text to the center. Then you can see the text is actually moved to the center of the screen and then we need to change the color. So, color is going to like 333, just a light black. And after that, we need to style this particular form element. So, first we have this form group. So, we are going to select this form group to style it properly. So, here we are going to type the form group and then we need to start its body. Inside of that, the first property that we need to target is the margin bottom property because right now this is actually a one row and this is actually the second row because we are going to targeting it. So, we need to apply the margin property. So, margin bottom is going to be like a 20 pixel. So, once I specify the 20 pixel, then you can see now they actually spaced is increased between these button and also in this particular input type and label. Alright, so this is the only single property that we have used inside the form group. So after applying the code to the form group, which is the class that is uh, this one, this is the form group. So the next step is to we need to style this particular label. So coming back to the style.css, so after the end of this form group, I am actually here using the label. And inside of the label, first we need to add the display property, which is display is going to be block. If I do that, then you can see now the input type is actually moved to the next line, which is the next row. And after that, we need to add the property, which is margin bottom property. So margin bottom is going to be like 5 pixel. Because right now, these two are actually very close to each other. So we need to add some spacing between them. So now you can see there is a 5 pixel margin between the label and the input type. And the next, we need to add the color attribute is the color property so here it is going to be 33 which is the same color for the heading and then we need to add the font weight so we are going to increase the font weight to 600 then you can see now it's appearing a little bit more crisp and bolder after that we need to add the code for this input type so we need to select the input and then we need to start the square brackets and then we need to start its curly brackets instead of the square brackets we need to set the type not an S type, it is going to be type and then to use equal to sign and set the double quotes. We need to specify the text. So we are actually targeting the this particular input which is inside the form group under the label. So this will be we are going to style. So the first we need to set the width. So width is going to be 95%. So you can see now the Width is actually going to be 95%. It is actually increase its width. The next property we need to add is the padding because right now it is very small. So if I increase the padding, now it's become a little bit bigger than the text. So now you can see the padding property display its result. And after that, we need to add the font size property. So next we need to add the font size which is 16 pixel. And then we need to add the border radius property. So border radius is going to be 4 pixel. And after that, we need to add the border property so that we have to apply a border here. So border is going to be one pixel, which is a solid border. And then we need to provide the color. So color is going to be like hashtag hash character CCC. So you can see now it has a little bit of the dark gray border. 
So that's now the completion of the code for the input type as well. And after that, we need to add the code for the button. So here we need to select the button. And inside of that, we need to start its curly brackets. And then the first property that we are going to use is the padding property. Inside of the padding, first we need to add the padding from top and bottom is going to be 10 pixel. From left and right is going to be 20 pixel. If I save it now, you can see the padding is actually changed inside the button. Then after that, we need to add the font size property. So font size is going to be 16 pixel. And then this is the font. We need to compare the font size as well. Save it, then you can see the font of the button is actually increased. Then we need to add the background color. So background color is like a hashtag AA and it is going to 7E66. So this will be the background color. Then we need to style the border. So border is going to be none. And then also we need to remove the outline. So outline is also going to be none. And then we need to add the border radius. So border radius is going to be 4 pixel. And then we need to change the color. So we need to use the white color. That is this one. Now you can see the button is actually changed. Also the last property that we want to change is the cursor pointer. And you can see the cursor is actually changed to pointer. Like a hand type of the cursor. Okay, so that's now the completion of the code for the button. So our last thing is left is to actually stylize this particular result one. So that it will be look like this particular structure. So coming back to the Visual Studio code again. So the first we need to add the code for the result container. Result container. So I'm going to check the name of the result container. Yes, this is the class name result container. Then to start its opening and closing pair of the bracket. And after that, we need to add the code which is first we need to add the display property so this display is going to be none if i do that then you can see the it is actually not visible so this property we need to set it to none but we are going to comment it out because once we complete the style code then we need to use this property and we are going to change this property by using the javascript code and after that we need to add here a margin top property so margin top is going to be 20 pixel and then we need to add the background color so background color is like our white color then you can see the color is actually changed and then we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 20 pixel from all side and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is same as the button which is 4 pixel and you can see the things are actually changed inside the browser window then we need to use the box shadow property so i'm going to copy the box shadow from here I'm coming back to the result container and then pasting the code here because it is same the only thing is changed it is this one this is actually 3 pixel and this one is actually 6 pixel if i save it then you can see now it looks like a card like effect so instead of that we have specified the h3 and paragraph element and also we have a result container if i come back to the index.html you can see here we have this result container as well which is a division tag so I'm going to paste the result and starting its curly brackets. So instead of that, we need to add the margin top property. Because right now you can see week passed and this age in weeks is appearing very close to each other. So that is the reason we need to add here a margin top property, which is going to be 10 pixel. If I save it and then we need to again use this result class name and then we need to select the H3 element. Because we need to stylize the H3 element. So we need to change the color. So instead of black, we are going to just lighter the black means we are going to use the light form of the black color and then we need to add the font size. So font size is going to be 16 pixel and then we need to add the result again. So I am going to copy this because we need to stylize the paragraph element as well. So this is our paragraph element. Not a capital one, just a small one. Then we need to close the curly bracket and instead of that we need to apply the font size property so font size is going to be 16 pixel or i can go with the like uh, 15 pixel and then we need to add the another property which is margin bottom so margin bottom is going to be 10 pixel so that's marks the completion of the code if i just come back to the index.html if i copy this one again actually show you the results if i save it then you can see means the data will be displayed in this particular form so I'm going to select this whole code and just comment it out because we are going to generate this code by using the JavaScript code. If I control save it and also coming back to the style.css. So at the top we have used this particular display none. So I'm also going to uncomment this property because we want to hide the result. 
So once we run the application, we want to display this particular structure of the application. And once we click on this particular calculate age button, then we want to display the result just like in the our output application. If I change the date of birth here, like 15, 15 not a valid month name, 12, and then we here we want to add it. And also I'm going to change the year name, which is 2000 and simply click it. Then you can see this is the actually display the result. Okay, so that's marks the completion of the code for the CSS part. So our next step is to start with the JavaScript part of the project. So our next step is to start with the JavaScript part of the project, which is our age calculator application. So for that, we need to use the script.js file. Now instead of this script.js file, first we need to get the ID of the form. So the ID of the form is age calculator. So I'm going to copy this ID. So we need to get the ID of this and after that we need to listen to the submit listener. So what I mean, I'm going to show you once I complete the code. So first here we need to fetch the form element. So it is actually age calculator form. Age calculator form. I'm going to use the camel case typing. And then here we need to use the document dot get element by id and instead of that we need to specify the id inside the double quotes so this is the age calculator now we have find the id of this form element and next we need to add the listener to this particular form age calculator form variable so here add this particular age calculator and i'm going to set the listener by using the add event listener so we are going to listen to the like uh, submit event and then we need to actually provide a anonymous function which is an arrow function that has an event as a parameter and then we need to start its bracket and instead of that we need to call the calculate calculate age function so this is a function that we need to create so here I am going to use the function calculate age and then I am going to start the round brackets and then its curly brackets. Also whenever we, if I control save, if I come back here, so if I click it, then you can see it is actually asking for fill out this field. Now instead of this particular listener when we submit it, we need to also call a one function here which is the event dot prevent default. So this particular is used to actually stop the page being refreshed because by default whenever we submit the button inside the form elements then it's going to refresh the page also but we want to display the data in a form of list. So for that reason we are actually used here this particular function. If you can google it like this prevent default you will get more information about this particular function. It is a javascript function. So now the main thing is we need to calculate the age. Now instead of this calculate function, we need to create a bunch of variables. So I'm going to make some spaces because we need to write a lot of code inside this particular function. So the first thing is we need to create the date object and also we need to actually fetch the current date of the system. So the first thing is we need to fetch the current date of the system. So for that we need to create here a const variable and then it is going to be as today. So this is going to hold a value new date. So once we call this one a new date object, then it is going to have a current date from the current date to the specified date of birth. Between this range, we are going to calculate the age of the date of birth means age of the person. So through this way, our age calculator working. And after that, we need to actually fetch the data from this input type so for that we need to also create the variable so which is also type const and this is actually a birth date input so this will be the variable name and is equal to we need to fetch the id so document dot get element by id and then inside of that we need to specify the id name of this input type so if i come back to the index.html so here this is the input type so the id name is birth date so i'm going to copy it and coming back to the script.js and i am going to paste it here also we need to actually get the value so i'm going to 
specify here a dot then the value so we want the value of this input type so this input type value is actually a text so for that now we get the value which is like if i enter here like 25 10 and like 2000 so if i enter this value then you can see whenever this is actually treated as a string so we need to actually split this string into three parts the first is the date the second is the month and the last is the year and also we need to split we don't need this particular hyphen we not require these ones so for that we need to create here some variables so we are going to create three variables so first we need to create the birth date parts so this will be the first variable so make sure you type the name of the variables very carefully because most of the variables names are very similar so this is the birth date parts and this is actually equal to the birth date input so this is this will have the string that we are getting it from the birth date input now it has the value so we are going to use this particular birth date input variable so with the use of the split function we are going to split the string so we need to split it into three parts so we want to remove it so to remove the we need to specify the string that we want to remove means the character that we want to remove from the string so we want to remove this if i control save it then you will see nothing but i am going to show you with the use of the console log so i am going to here use the console console.log and instead of that we need to specify the variable name which is the birth input means birth date input this is the first variable that will actually display the string as it is that is actually present inside the input type and after that we need to display the again i am going to duplicate into one more time and instead of that we need to display the birth date parts if i control save it and if i just come back to my browser i am going to maximize the browser and also i need to open my developer window means i need to show case the console as well right now you can see nothing is actually visible inside the console so i'm going to add here this particular date of birth if i calculate it then you can see this is the input that is this particular line of code show the date of birth as it is but we have splitted the this particular string into three parts with the use of the this particular line of code and we are going to print it in the second console log statement so now we are actually remove this particular hyphens from the string so next step is we need to store these particular values in their corresponding variable names because this is the like uh, birth day this is the birth month and this is the birth year so we need to create these three variables so i'm going to actually minimize it from now this particular window of the browser and coming back to the visual studio code again and here we need to type the const and then I need to create the birth day variable as I already told you because we have selected the birth input into three different parts. So birth day is equal to birth date parts because right now the parts is stored inside the birth date parts variable. So it is actually now treated as a string. If I come back to the browser again, so you can see the day is actually stored in the zeroth index because split function does actually what it's going to give us the new array as well. So that is the reason now the thing is actually stored inside the zeroth index which is the birthday and the month is actually stored in the first index and the year is stored in the second index so that is why i am actually here specifying this zero and then we need to add here a terminator which is optional then i'm going to again create here another variable which is birth month and then again it is going to equal to birth date parts and then to specify the square brackets and then we are going to pass here a one and then we need to use here a minus one now this minus one is basically used to actually minus the one month from the javascript date object because by default this the date function of the javascript the date object i can say that the javascript the date object of the javascript has a month started from zero to 11 index and there are total 12 months so on 0 we have january 
on 1 we have February. So if we go like to index up to 11, so on the 11th number we have December. So it means the date of birth that we have added here is like, now if I enter it and calculate it, which is the 10th month of the calendar year, which is October. But in JavaScript date of that, the October is actually stored at the 9th. So that is why I have used here a minus 1 to actually minus the birth date part which is the birth month, not a birthday date part, which is the birth month with the minus 1 so that we get the 9 which is October in case of the JavaScript date object. But in calendar, it is actually the 10th month. So I think I you get my point, but I want to explain to you guys. Next, we need to create the another variable which is birth year. So we need to store the year. So it is going to be birth date parts. Then it is actually stored at the index 2 then we need to terminate it as per your wish. So after getting these all three parts, we need to pass it to the birth date by using the new date object. So again, I'm going to here create another variable const and then this is the main final birth date. So this date is actually going to have a capital camel case typing name is equal to then we need to again create the new object of the date and now at this point of time we need to pass these three variables as a parameter to this particular date object. So first I am going to pass here a birth year, then second I am going to pass here a birth month and then third I am going to pass here a birth day. Then I am going to save it and then I am going to actually display the values of all of these three variables. So again I am going to here duplicate into many times by pressing the oh, alt and shift key and the down arrow key. So here I am going to display the birth day which is this one and then I am going to display the birth month and then here I am going to display the birth year. So this particular is just for the tutorial purpose. Okay, So once we complete the entire code, I am going to just simply remove these console statements. If I control save it, coming back to the browser again and here if I enter the date of birth, click on calculate, then you can see the we are getting the birth day, birth month and the birth year. Okay, so if I come back to the Visual Studio code again, so our next step is we need to create a one helper function inside this particular calculate age function. Now this function is actually going to check the input type whether it is a date or not a text means it is going to check the input type which is this one if I is now going to resize the window. So we need to create the helper function here just I already told you. So first I am going to set the const then is valid valid date. So we need to check the valid. So this is an anonymous function that is going to accept a one date parameter means it is an arrow function. Then we need to start its curly pair of the brackets and inside of that I am going to check for the condition. So first I am going to return, return then starting the return block then I am going to split into multiple times. Inside of that first I am going to use the object dot prototype dot and then to string which is this string and then I am going to call and here we need to use the date which is this particular parameter, the local variable for this particular function. So if it is equals to equals to the object date, now this object date is actually a pre-made JavaScript object, object date. If it is data condition, so this particular thing does what, if I enter the if condition, then it will become more clear to you. Just I am going to complete the code first, so here I need to use the double AND operator which is the AND operator and then I need to use here check whether the value is NN whether the entered number is not a number is NN if it is that a case then we want to return this particular thing alright so this is now the code is completed for inside the return statement okay and if I just structure the code like this so that you can see the code in just only one window and after that we need to use this function. So here we need to add the if condition and instead of that I am going to 
use the is validate function that is this one and inside of that we need to pass the date date of birth which is this birth date variable so i'm going to pass it here birth date variable and instead of that means we are going to check whether this particular entered birth date is a date of birth so we are going to check it with this particular helper function and we are calling this helper function inside this if block so if it is like i already told you in the index part of the html means in the inside the index.html we have used here a input type text whereas in my previous javascript course i used the input type as date of birth so we have a calendar to fetch the date input but right now we are actually using here a text so it can be like enter a random text or it can be a number so that is the reason we need to check for this particular condition if we have used here an input type date then we don't need to do this particular stuff we don't need to check for these conditions we can easily get the date of birth inside this particular birth variable through the input type date of birth but because we are using the input type text because the main idea of this project is we can enter the date of birth manually and then once we enter the date of birth manually we can check the age of the person so that is a main theory behind this particular age calculator project so that is the reason we have to do this particular conditional stuff and also we need to break the particular day month and year into these three separate variables and after that we pass this again to the new date object okay so enough talking it's time to complete the code once if it is not a case if it is not a date of birth then it is going to display an alert suppose you have entered here a just a random text so in that case it's actually going to display a alert message so we are going to use the alert inside of the alert we are going to display invalid date invalid date format please enter so i am going to use the proper case means capital case typing please enter a valid valid date in so we need to provide the hint to the user by using dd mm and yy format okay so this is what we actually want to display inside the alert all right and after that we don't want to execute the code so we need to use the return statement okay so this is for the code if i control save it and if i run the code and here if i calculate the age then you can see this particular alert box pop up in valid date format please enter the valid date in ddmmyy format so perfect our condition is now working so the next step is we need to calculate the ages minutes times and hours if i just show you the final application we want to calculate this particular stuff so coming back to the visual studio code again because now we have specified the check for the invalid inputs so if the user entered the proper date format so we need to calculate the month age and the other required things for the project so for that we need to create here a bunch of variables so again i am going to here use the const so first we need to create a variable age in milliseconds and then this is actually going to use the today minus current birth date so this will be used to get the age in milliseconds so once we calculate the age in milliseconds with the use of this age in milliseconds we can calculate the age in seconds so for that we need to create the another variable which is age in seconds so after defining the age in seconds then this is going to use the age in milliseconds to calculate the age in seconds so for that we need to use here a math dot floor function so math dot floor function so this will be used to actually get the whole positive value means the positive whole number and inside of that we need to use the age in milliseconds so age in milliseconds it is going to be divided with the 1000 because if we divide the age in millisecond with 1000 milliseconds then we are actually getting the age in seconds means we are getting the seconds because in one second we have 1000 milliseconds and after that if we control means shift and alt and then press the down arrow key to actually duplicate this line of code 
and inside of that we need to calculate the age in minutes age in minutes now to calculate the age in minutes we need to use the age in seconds so to in one minute we have 60 seconds so we are going to divide it with the 60 then again i am going to duplicate it into one more time after calculating the minutes the next we need to calculate the hours so hours so for that we need to use the age in minutes age in minutes and we need to actually in one hour we have 60 minutes so we are going to divide it with the 60 again i am going to duplicate it to one more time then next we need to calculate the age in days age in days and for that we need to use the age in hours so it is our age in hours and we have by in one day we have 24 hours so we are going to divide it with the 24 again i am going to duplicate into one more time and instead of that i am going to call it here age in like our weeks so age in weeks so we need to calculate age in weeks so for that we again going to use the age in days variable value which is age in days and instead of that age in days so in one week we have seven days so we are going to divide it with the seven and after that we need to calculate the months so once we get the days we can calculate the months so again age in months so we are going to divide the age in weeks means age in days not weeks age in days by using here a value called 30.43 and 6875 this is a random approximate value i can use here a 31 because some of the months has 31 days and some months have 30 days so i'm going to use this approximate float value to actually get the day in the nearest possible whole value because this will be not exactly calculated we are going to approximately calculate the age in months if you want to calculate it more specifically then you need to work with the floating point values so you need to also take care of the precision and the like decimal values also okay so i'm just going to just give you the basic idea how we can calculate and build this particular type of the application okay and after that we need to calculate the age in years so again here i will be type the age in years and then we need to divide it with because we get the age in days we all need to divide it age in days with the value 365.25 now we have a 365 days but in leap year we have 366 days so that is why we are going to use this approximate value to actually divide the age in days to calculate the age in years so once i calculate these values so if i console log it then it's actually going to display the values inside the console log which you can do it but uh, we want to actually set this data to the result container so that we can display it like this one so for that we need to actually update the inner html of the result container so here we need to create the another const variable so it is actually a result container result container so first we need to get the reference to that result container which is get element to by id so we need to get the id of that particular result container so this is the result container i'm going to copy the id name and coming back to here and pasting the name of the id similarly we need to get the id of the result as well so i'm going to copy it into one more time and here i'm going to type the result and then the id which is result okay so now we get the reference to the result and the result container it's time to update the value of the result inner html so we want to update the value of the inner html so i'm going to use the template string here by using the back tick key so template string and then i'm going to split it this code into multiple lines then we need to add here a division tag so i'm going to copy this particular division tag from here and coming back to the script.js file and i'm going to paste the code here by just formatting it like this one and then i just need to format this one because we want a h3 paragraph element 
so the first one is actually our result item that the class that we want the next we need to add the h3 and then the paragraph element so the first we want to display the age of the person so for that we need to use here a age and then we need to use this column and then we need to use here a template because we are using a template string so we can use the curly brackets okay and then use the dollar sign curly bracket now we can actually here specify the variable so we are actually using here a age in years variable age in years and after that we need to concatenate it with the use of dollar variable we can dollar curly bracket and then here we need to specify the age in months all right and after specifying the age in months then we need to use the modulus operator and then we need to provide here a 12 and then we need to concatenate with the months months and then again we need to here use the dollar symbol then curly brackets and instead of that we need to specify the age in days so this will be the variable value and then we need to again use here a modulus operator and then we need to use the 30 and then we need to concatenate with the days so if i control save it but uh, right now you can see the it is not going to display the data because we also need to actually close this division and also this paragraph tag and uh, here we need to close this particular div tag okay so if i control save it and the thing is we need to set the display style of the result container to block so for that here we need to again call the result container variable result container dot style because we are need to update the style property of the display container which is display is equal to we need to set the display to block if i terminate the code and if i control save it if i enter the date of birth if i click on calculate it actually it is saying the invalid date format so if i control save it and if i refresh it so actually it is not happy it is saying the date is invalid why it is invalid because it is already working so coming back to the conditions here now we have added this check so it is saying that the date is invalid so actually i have here because it is outside of the array that is the reason we are actually getting it here and then we need to remove this one so if i control save it so that is the right procedure to write this particular code if i control save it and if i again enter here date of birth click on calculate it now you can see the age is actually displayed which is 22 7 months so here we need to also add the years because right now we are actually forget we added the 7 months but here we need to concatenate with the years as well so y e a r s years and then i'm going to use this as capital months then this one for the days control save it and if i enter the date of birth again click it then you can see now we are able to see the 22 years 7 months 16 days okay so similarly we need to create the other result element as well for the display of the months okay so again i'm going to do that so again here we need to use this one then here we need to add the value to month months past months past and then we need to remove these whole lines of code and instead of that we need to use the variable age in months this is what and then again i need to copy this one again paste it here then we need to use here a weeks past weeks past and then here we need to use the age in weeks again i'm going to copy this code here paste it and then inside of this particular one we need to change it into days past and then again here we need to use the age in days then again i'm going to copy this code from here copy it and then this is going to be hours passed so this one is our hours passed and then here we need to pass the variable age in hours 
So we have passed months, weeks, days, hours. The only thing is left minutes and seconds. So again, I'm going to copy this one and paste it here. Then this one is going to be like minutes passed. And then we need to here use the variable name age in minutes. And again, I'm going to copy this and paste it into one more time. This one is actually for the seconds. Seconds passed, then the variable value which is age in seconds. If I control save it and if I enter the data bar, click on calculate age, then you can see we are getting the values. So right now you can see the output one project is the output of the project and this is the final version of the project. Now both of these two are actually looking a little bit different. That is because the margin property and also this is the font size is actually used is actually 18 pixel. That is why it is actually a little bit bigger than this one. So to fix this, we need to add the actually margin property to this like uh, age container. That is age is actually our, if I come back to the Visual Studio code. So this is our H3 element. So we can add a margin property to this age one, which is a margin bottom. Then it will be resolve the problem. And also we can increase the like uh, font size of this to 18 pixel or this one to 16 pixel, 17 pixel or whatever uh, pixel value you want to use. So coming back to the standard CSS and also I'm going to just maximize this the final one and this one I'm going to resize it into again so that I can place it like this layout. So coming back to the H3 so I'm going to apply the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to be 10 pixel and the font size I will be using here 18 pixel. So now you can see it's actually solved the problem. Now it's actually looks like the similar if I just show you, it's actually similar, okay, because inside the browsers it looks a little bit different. So this is what the application is built up successfully guys. So that is for this particular JavaScript part of the age calculator application. So if you like this course, then definitely leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses and also the quality of my future courses. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone. So welcome back to this lecture. So in this lecture, we're going to build the random paragraph generator application. So this is the final application that we're going to build in this particular module. So if I refresh the page to actually give you the fresh overview of the application. So if I click on this generate button then you can see we are actually able to generate the five paragraphs randomly if i enter here a nine then it's going to generate the nine paragraphs randomly if i enter here like 10 then it's going to display the 10 paragraphs so our application has only 10 paragraphs so if i enter here a 11 value which is more than the paragraphs provided in the application it's going to display a one random paragraph or if i enter here a value zero then it's going to display an alert the value cannot be zero. So this is a check we are going to apply inside the JavaScript part of the project. That's it for this particular random paragraph generator application which is generate random paragraphs. So this is the application we are going to build in this entire module. So our first step is to start with the JavaScript part of the project. So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the random paragraph generator application. So for that I have already created the three files which is index.html, style.css and javascript file which is script.js. And also I linked these files by using these particular lines of the code. And also I have added the boilerplate code of the HTML and changed the title to random paragraph generator and launched the application into the chrome browser. Ok so the first step is we need to add the one card because if I show you the final application, this is actually a one card or you can say that the container instead of that these four elements are actually placed. So first we need to create that particular divisions and then we are going to style it with the use of this style sheet code. So here we need to add the code that is card then I press the tab key and instead of this card everything will be added. So this card will be act as a main container for the other elements. Then we need to here create the row and instead of this row we need to create another division division and then we are going to use here a label 
and then for this we are going to display the items and then here we need to use the generate 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 random paragraph okay so this will be now you can see the elements is now visible to the browser screen then after that inside this particular row division we need to add the another div just an empty div without any class name so i'm going to here use the div and instead of that we need to specify the input so the type of the input is going to be number according to the value of this input type we are going to generate the random paragraph so the default value that i want to add is the 5 because i want to display the 5 paragraphs this value is totally depends upon you if you want to display 3 paragraphs then you need to specify the 3 values and here i have added the items as an id to this input type number so after that we need to add the another div which is inside this particular row div div and instead of that we need to add the button so this button is going to actually fire an on click event which is generate and then we need to specify the round bracket and instead of that we need to add the text generate and then for displaying the result which is uh, if i show you the final application this is the result actually so we need to create a separate division and then we are going to add the data with the use of the javascript code by using the dom methods so coming back to the visual studio code again so after the end of this row because this row is the content that is visible to the screen once we launch the application so if i refresh it so this is the div for the row elements it has three elements there is label input button as you can see in the output one label input and button and then outside of this row division we need to add the another division which is div and we need to provide the class to this div so this is also a type row row and then inside of that we are going to display nothing because we are going to display the data dynamically but we want the id so that we can fetch this inside the javascript and then add the data dynamically to this particular division by using the inner html function or inner text so that's it for the html part of the project so our next step is to start with the css part of this generate random paragraph application or i can say that the random paragraph generator application so now it's time to start with the css part of the project by using the style.css file so instead of the style.css file we need to provide a style code for this generate random paragraph application right now we want to actually reset the default styling of the browser so for that we need to use the universal selector so first here i am going to add the padding which you already know i have actually done this thing in many of the previous projects so padding is zero margin is zero then we need to use the box sizing so box sizing is is going to be border box and then we need to use the font family so font family here at this point of time i'm going to use the Veltana. then you can see the font is actually changed inside the browser and then we need to add the body so that we can add that linear gradient color so body instead of that we need to use the background property background property which is the background not color one we need a background one and then we need to use the linear gradient so we want to apply the linear gradient to left and then we need to provide the color code so it is going to like f7 4813 which is a reddish color and then we need to add the another color because the linear gradient is the intersection of the two colors like 4 c and 0 so this will be the color now you can see the color is actually applied to the background of the body and it is visible to the web browser so the next we need to actually apply the style for the label because right now this generate password so we are going to add the code for the label first so we are going to directly select the label here and uh, here I'm going to add the text decoration. So text decoration to underline. And after that, I'm going to add here a font weight. So font weight is going to like 600. Then you can see the size of the means the weight of the generate random paragraph is increased. After that, we need to apply the style code for the card element because that is a main container. If I come back to the index.html, so you can see this is a main container in which everything is actually placed. If I collapse it, and you can see this is the main container of the division. So, control save it and coming back to the CSS part. So, card 
and starting its curly pair of the brackets. And after that, first we need to add the max width property. So max width is going to be 900 pixel. If I save it, then you can see nothing is actually changed because we need to first here specify the background color. Then it will it will be visible to the screen. So the background color I'm going to use the allies blue. So or I can use the white one because allies blue is not looking good. Hashtag and then three times F key. So this is the background color we want to use. And then we need to use the margin property. So margin is going to be like from top is going to be like 10 pixel, 10 pixel margin, and from and from left and right it is going to be auto. Auto and here if I save it, then you can see there is a 10 pixel margin from the top. Then we need to add the box shadow property. So box shadow is actually zero. Then here we need to use the two pixel. Then the blurness is going to be two pix four pixel, and then we need to use the function which is RGBA. Then zero, 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 and here we need to use the zero point two. I control save it. Then we need to increase the padding as well. So padding from all side is going to be twenty pixel. If I maximize the window size of the browser, then you can see we are actually able to see this particular container at the center of the screen, which is our card. The next thing is we want the rounded corners. So for that we need to use the border radius property. So border radius, not a border bottom, we want a border radius property. Border radius is going to be 10 pixel so that we get the nice rounded borders. Okay, round nice rounded corners. So that's not the completion of the code for the card. So next we need to add the code for the row element because this is the row. So we have two rows, this particular row and then this one. So we're going to add the code for this row selector so this row and instead of that we need to add the margin top property so margin top is going to be like 15 pixel once i did it then you can see there is a difference between the margin if i enter some element inside the paragraph like this random stuff if i enter you now i have added in the wrong part if i enter some random stuff here if i control save it then you can see there is a margin 15 pixel if i remove the margin 15 pixel from the row this is a margin top property then you can see they are very like appearing and very close to each other so that is the reason we need to add here margin top property all right and i am going to coming back to the index.html just removing this text because we don't want it control save it and coming back to the style.css file and after this row we need to add the code for the row division so again here row and then we need to add the division tags and then we need to apply the code so here inside of that we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 10 pixel if i did it then you can see now they are actually looks much more cooler okay means looks much more good and the style is perfectly selected after that we need to add the code for the row input and here we need to select the row and then input and then we need to start the code of this particular row input so here inside of that i'm going to add the width so width is going to be like 100 pixel now this width is for the input type so this is a now we have actually reduced the size because just we just only want to display a one number so that is the reason i have actually added the width to 200 pixel even you can decrease the width to 50 pixel that will also work but uh, for the simplicity purpose i'm just going to use the 100 pixel and after that we need to use here another property which is the padding property which is going to be 5 pixel and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is 5 pixel again and then we need to add the border so there should be a border to this particular input type so it is of one pixel solid border of color i will be using here ff which is 000 and 0 so red color border we are going to use it for this particular input type and then we need to add the outline property so outline we are going to use it none okay so whenever we actually as in the focus then the outline will not be visible then we need to add the last property which is the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel not ps it's going to be 16 pixel so you can see now the size of the font is actually increased next we need to style this particular button so again i'm going to copy this row because the button is also placed inside the row division so here we need to select the row and then we need to select the button so under the row and then we have this particular button Okay, so coming back to the style.css, closing its curly bracket. Instead of that, first we need to add the background color. 
so we need to add the background color which is our e4 and then 6141 so this will be the color we are going to use for the button then we need to stylize the button so first we need to add the padding so padding is going to be 5 pixel from top and bottom then from left and right it is going to be 10 pixel and then we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to be 5 pixel from all sides so that we get the rounded corners and then we need to use the border to none and if i save it then you can see the button is actually taking its shape means its style and after that we need to increase the font size so font size is going to be 16 pixel and then i have actually using here a color property so color is going to be white and then we need to use here uh, another which is a property which is cursor pointer which is always required and then we need to use the outline property outline this is going to be none so I did that then you can see if I hover over the button then it, the cursor is actually changed it to pointer 1 ok so this is for the code for the button so the last CSS that we want to apply for the paragraph element so that paragraph element will be looks like more great because inside of that row we are going to display the paragraph element we are going to add the paragraph element inside of this dynamically with the use of javascript code so that is the reason we have going to add the CSS first because it's just only a three lines of the CSS. So that is why I'm actually adding it here. So that once we start the code inside the JavaScript, we do not come back to the CSS part to add the code. So first we need to add the margin code, which is margin top is going to be 10 pixel. And after that, we need to add the font size property. So font size is going to be 16 pixel. And then we need to add the text align property. Text alignment is going to be justify. Right, so if we enter a paragraph element here, like as I want to show you paragraph element, actually, I am inside the script tag. This is the paragraph element here. We need to add the paragraph element. I have actually used inside the script tag, so I am going to just make it this one. And here, we need to add the text. So, I am going to copy a line of paragraph from the internet. So I copy it and if I just come back to here and if I save it, then you can see this is how our style of the paragraph will look like. Alright, so that's now the completion of the code. Then I'm going to remove this paragraph line because we are going to generate it dynamically. Means we are going to generate it with the use of the JavaScript code. Okay, so that is actually the CSS part of the project. It looks similar like the output one that we want to develop for the module so you can see it's almost similar so that's it for the css part of the generate random paragraph application our next step is to start with the javascript part of the application so now it's time to start with the javascript part of the project which is random paragraph generator so for that we need to use the script.js file now instead of that first we need to get these ids of the elements that is the id of this input type and then we need to fetch the id of this class which is the row and the id is actually data so we need to fetch the ids of these two elements and also we need to actually create this function inside the javascript so i'm going to copy this generate and coming back to the script.js so here we need to create this function and then i'm going to paste the name of the function and then start its curly brackets and after that we need to create here a variables so i'm going to create here a const so this is actually going to have a paragraphs so this is going to actually equals to paragraph of the arrays and then we need to create the another variable here so const and this is of type item and this is actually equals to the document dot get element by id this is document dot get element by id and we need to actually get the id of the items so here inside the index.html so this is the id the items that we want to display because every random paragraph is actually as an item so inside the double quotes i'm going to paste the id name and then also providing the hash symbol because it is an id and after that we need to create the another which is the comments and here inside of it i'm going to use the data container container and it is actually equals to again document dot get element by id and instead of that we need to provide the code of the id which is the container so our container is this one which is the data 
So again coming back to this and here I am going to paste the code. Then for the shuffling of these particular paragraphs, like if I show in the application, whenever I click it, then you can see every time the paragraphs is shuffled. So for that we need to create another function and that function is actually our function shuffle. Function shuffle and this is actually going to accept a one parameter of type array. Okay, and then I'm going to actually make here some space and just take this code to the top of the JavaScript file. And here inside of this content paragraphs, I need to actually paste the list of the arrays. So I'm going to copy it from the internet, then I will be continue the video again. So here you can see I have actually copied the code from the internet, it means the array template code because it is a very time consuming task. If I just do it manually, then it will be a very long running task and it will take a lot of time and the length of the video will be increased like uh, twice of this particular video means it will become more than a uh, half an hour video. So I don't want to do that. That is the reason I have copied this code from the internet. So if I just take you to the end of the line of the paragraph, after the end of line of the paragraph, you should provide a comma and then you should enter the data. Otherwise you will face the issue. So now it's time to add the code inside the shuffle function that is actually used to shuffle the paragraph elements, which is the array elements. So what I mean is whenever I click on the generator, so you can see these paragraphs are actually reshuffled. So this is actually achieved by using this shuffle function. So inside the generator, we are going to call the shuffle function. So first we need to provide the code for the shuffle function. So inside of that first we need to create two variables. The first is actually for the current index and then we need to create the another variable which is the random index. So let first I'm going to here type the current index and then it's going to equal to our array. So this is the array, the local variable of this particular function which is passed as an argument. And then we need to create another variable which is the random index. So this is going to be empty, not we need to don't need to initialize it. Then we are going to use here a while loop so that we can loop through the elements of the array. And here we need to run the loop according to whenever the current index is not equal to. We don't want to run the so at this point of time the value is present here 5. So 5 is not equal to 0, which is actually true condition because 5 is not equal to 0, but it's actually going to check the reverse condition. So that is the reason this loop will be executed. So instead of that, first we need to use the random index. So random index is equal to math dot floor function. So this actually is so that we can guess the closest value, which is a whole number, then math dot random. So we need to here use the random function. So that we can get generate a random value and this is going to be current index. So we are going to multiply the current index with the random function. Alright and after that we are going to here decrementing the value of the current index to minus 1. And then we need to here swap the values of the array. Instead of that array then we need to again here use the brackets. So instead of that we need to pass the current index. So this code actually I get it from the stack overflow. To actually shuffle the elements of the array. This is little tricky code. It uses an algorithm. So that is why I am just going to not going to explain this particular code because this is like a very tricky part of the algorithm. It will take hard. It will take more than uh, like a half an hour lecture to actually explain this entire code in more detail and step by step. So this is not a part of the DSA course. That is the reason I am not going to explain this entire stuff. Then I need to create here another array bracket and just split into multiple lines. And after that, inside of that, I am going to again call here array. That is an array and then I am going to start the random bracket. So main thing is it's going to replace the index. That is the reason. Or we can say that the swapping of the index. Then here we need to use the current index. Alright. Then I am going to just simply remove the extra spacing. So this will actually does what it's going to reshuffle the array. So after the end of this while loop, Outside of the while loop body, we are going to return an array. So whatever we passed as an array, we are going to return it. So this marks the completion of the code for the shuffle function. And then I am coming back to the generate function. Instead of generate, first we need to check for the empty value. If the value is 0, 
so we don't we want to actually display the condition if i just go to the final product if here is zero and then click on generate then we need to display this particular alert pop up so for that we need to check for the if condition so if the value of the item dot value so here we have the item value we already fetched it so if the value of this item dot value is actually equal to equal to zero then we want to display the alert not arguments it's going to be alert and then we need to pass here some message the value cannot be zero so after specifying the condition now let's check it by control save and if i enter here like a zero and if i click on the generate button so it's actually not executing what will be the reason now the problem inside of this particular line of the code which is the line number 18 during the initialization so i have actually here used the get element by id so instead of the id we don't need to specify this hash character because uh, this will be used when we are actually using the query selector so if i use here like uh, simply if i just remove it because right now instead of this i have used the get element by id as a data this data is also an id class attribute so if i come back to the button like where is the result container this is the so you can see if this is actually id so we have used the get element by id but inside of this one i have actually specified the hash character so that is the reason so we need to remove it so if we want to use the hash character for the fetching of the ui elements of the html or i can say the html elements then we can need to use here a query selector method so this is a small mistake i did so if i run it and if i just come back to the browser and enter here as zero click on generate then you can see now we are actually getting the alert pop up which is the value cannot be zero okay now coming back to the generate function so instead of that we need to specify the else if condition and save and coming back to the brackets and the body so instead of that we need to check for the item value again we need to apply a one more condition item dot value if it is greater than like uh, our paragraph length so we want to display a, a random paragraph means at least we want to display a one paragraph if i run the final application so right now we have 10 if i enter here 11 and I click on generate then it's going to display a one random paragraph to this particular application so to achieve this one feature we need to here check for the else if condition instead of that then we are going to use these functions and we need to randomize the index so here first we need to create a variable so this variable is going to be like const random random index random index is equal to then again here we need to use the math we have need to press the enter here math dot floor function instead of that we need to call the math dot random random and then we need to multiply it with paragraph dot length like the same code we have did here but we inside the while loop we are going to use this one also so this is actually here equal to sign not a minus symbol so with this line of code we are actually getting the random index and that random index will be stored inside of this particular variable and after that we need to use here a data container data container dot inner html so this data container is actually the main container in which the paragraph will be displayed so data container is equal to we need to update its value so we are going to use here a template string and instead of that first we need to terminate it and then here we are going to use the dollar symbol and then we need to actually provide here a curly brackets and instead of that we need to pass the paragraphs the main array that we have actually defined at the top of this particular file of the javascript.js and instead of that we need to pass the index so that index is actually stored inside the random index variable if i control save it and just simply try to run the application by incrementing the value to 11 which is actually greater than the value then you can see now we are actually able to display the one paragraph randomly inside the data container so these all conditions we have checked so in the else part we are going to display the rest of the things like if we enter here a 9 so right now we have elements that is actually like 9 10 elements so we are going to display a 9 paragraph if we user enter here a 5 then we want to display a 5 paragraph 
with the shuffling of the elements so that is the reason we created this shuffle function so coming back to the else part so first we need to create here a variable which is const and then we need to use here a shuffle paragraphs which is the name of the fun name of the variable shuffle paragraphs is going to equal to paragraphs which is the array name of the variable then we need to call the shuffle function because we need to pass the arrays so here we need to pass the paragraphs which is the array we want to actually shuffle the elements of the paragraph whenever we click on the function we want to change the array means we want to shuffle the array then here we need to use the const variable which is for the selected selected paragraphs selected paragraphs is actually equal to the shuffled paragraphs which is a variable as it is actually created at the top so here we need to use the equal symbol shuffle paragraphs dot slice so we are going to use the slice so frame we want to slice we want to slice it from zero to item value item dot value and then we need to add here a paragraphs html is equal to and then we need to use here a selected paragraphs dot map function and instead of the map function we need to use here a paragraph and then the arrow sign and then we need to pass here a template string so by using the backtick character and then instead of that we need to pass this particular same code so I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Okay, and then instead of that, I don't need to pass this round bracket, so delete it, and this will be closed. So we have passed the paragraphs. Okay, so if I just decrease the size of the window, means increase the size of the Visual Studio Code window, and then we need to call here a join function. We want to join it with the empty string because we want to create a string so that is the reason we are actually want to join with the use of this join function so after that we are getting the our paragraphs because we are going to join all the paragraphs by using the map function okay and then we need to set this data to the data container dot inner html is equal to paragraph html so if I control save it and if I come back to my browser so here if I click on the generate now you can see we are actually able to generate the five paragraphs one more thing if I enter here a uh, like paragraph tag like here we need to add the p tag again here we just go to view and world wrap so the paragraph tag and then after this here we need to add the Closing tag of the paragraph element. Close the tag and if I control save it, we can generate. Now you can see the things are now appearing in the much better way with proper indentation. So now we are successfully able to build this application. I know that there is a uh, two things I have not explained. These two lines of the code. The reason for that this is actually a part of the algorithmic function. So which is actually a part of the DSA. It will take more than half an hour lecture to actually explain this concept. So finally I did this particular code and now the main application is created. So you can see it's actually going to generate 5 function. If I enter here a um, value 11 then it's going to display a 1 random function. If I enter here a 0 then it's going to display a 1 alert dialog or you can say that is the alert pop up. So that's marks the completion of this particular lecture. If you like this lecture then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome everyone so in this lecture we're going to create the digital piano application so let me show you the application that we're going to build in this particular module so this is the final application that we're going to build in this particular module so you can see we have this bunch of tiles of you can say that the piano key is when I click on it then you can see there is a music actually playing so each and every node has the same music because I have used the same sound file you can use a different sound file if you want the main idea is how we can play the music when click off this particular keys and also how can we style this particular layout so this is a small application just actually uses an external assets to play the music
So our first step is to start with the HTML part of the project which is piano application or you can say that the digital piano application. So our first step is to start with the HTML part. So for that I have already created the three file which is index.html, style.css and script.js file. Also before moving forward we need to create the sounds folder inside this project folder which is digital piano application or whatever directory you have named it. Instead of that you need to place the sound assets. If I click on this sound folder, I have already created the folder and I have already created the folder so I right click on it and then simply going to click on the find folder or maybe this particular one. Instead of that I have already created the sound folder so I am going to right click on it and click on the revealing file explorer. So you can see now this folder is empty so I am going to open the another folder. So you have to download this resources under the resources section of this particular lecture. So once you extract this uh, RAR file, then you will get these sounds files. So you need to copy these sounds files. Then I'm going to close this window and coming back to the window where we have actually used the reveal in file explorer command. Instead of that, you need to paste the all the other sounds files. Now if you come back to the Visual Studio Code, you can see these are the list of sound files now present inside the digital piano application under the sounds directory. So now we are ready to use these sound files inside our project. Now I'm going to click on this explorer tab so that you can see everything more clearly. Now our first step is to start with the main container which is a piano container. So I am going to use here a emit shortcut so this is going to be like piano and I will be using here a hyphen so container and then pressing the tab key. So this will actually auto complete the div tag with the class name piano container and instead of that we need to first use an h1 element which is for the heading for this one and then we need to place here a piano app the heading that you want or you can just simply use a digital piano application as well. Now if I control save it then you will see the text is actually appear inside the browser screen. Next we need to place the another element which is actually a div tag. So it is going to be act as a main container but we don't need to specify any selector inside of it. Instead of that we need to place the button. So this button is going to be like have an on click event. Instead of this on click event not on blur it is going to be like on click. So this is our on click event and inside of that we need to call the function which is like a play sound and then inside of this we need to pass a parameter inside the single quotes which is a character c. So this c character is actually denotes the sound file. So whatever character we are actually passing it here as a string because inside the single quote is treated as a string but right now we are actually passing a single character so it is treated as a character here. So we are passing a single character that string represents this particular node type. So we are going to give the reference. So make sure whatever you are passing here, it is going to match inside of these particular characters. So again for the another button when we copy and paste it, then we need to pass the A, 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 B, C. So these are the, we are giving the reference to these particular sound files dot mp3. Alright and then we need to provide here uh, another attribute which is the class attribute. So this one is actually for the white key white and then hyphen and then we need to provide the key element and then instead of that we need to provide the c character for the button now you can see the button is visible inside the browser similarly i'm going to duplicate this line of code one more time we need to again pass here a character which is going to be double c and then here also double c then we need to give the class name to black black key okay so this will be the css for the black key and then we need to copy these lines of code like uh, four more times. So one, two, three, and then four. I think we need to copy it one, two, three, four, five times. So then we need to change these parameters. So this is going to be D and this is going to be DD. Not DD, DD is the next one. That is this one is going to be D hash, hash. and this is actually our D D. All right. And this one is again now it's this particular one term. So this is going to be capital E and here we need to provide the capital E. Then the play sound is going to be like capital F. Then this one is going to be capital F. Alright, and then we need to provide here a FF. And this one is going to FF. And then here we need to change the G. And this one is also going to be G. Because the text, if I control save it, now these buttons are appearing inside the application. 
Now we need to change this particular one parameter. That is double G. Then I want to provide the double G. Note F, it is going to be double G. Then this one is going to be our capital A. And here it is also going to display capital A. If I control save it, now the values of the buttons is changed. The text. And then we need to provide the double A. Then this is also going to be double A. Actually, here the single quote is missing. That is why it's giving the error. And then this is the second last one because there is one more is left it's like b not a button and then here we need to provide the b as well all right and then we need to again copy the white one that has a white class key and then it's going to be like our c2 and this one is also our c2 Okay, so that's now the completion of the code for the HTML part. So the next step is to start with the CSS part of this particular digital piano application. So now our next step is to start with the CSS part of the piano application. So for that, first we need to link the standard CSS to our index.html. So for that, we need to use the link tag. Instead of the link tag, we need to provide the standard CSS because right now these standard CSS is actually present in the same directory. So that is the reason I have used here a standard CSS and also we need to add here a script tag so that we can link our script.js so src it's going to be like a src and then we need to provide here a script.js now so now our script.js file is also linked with the index.html so for the CSS part we need to come inside this style.css file so first I need to style the body element so the body element and instead of that we need to use the font family so font family i'm going to use here a arial helvetica font and then instead of that i'm going to use the text align property so text align is going to be center of the screen and then we need to provide the background color so background color like i want to use here a random color background and this is the background color i'm going to use it for this particular project then we need to provide the style sheet for the piano container So this will be the stature for the piano container and instead of that we need to provide the padding so padding is going to be 10 pixel okay and then we need to provide here a h1 tag which is to style the h1 element and then we need to remove its margin top property so margin top is going to be zero and then padding is also zero then you can see it's actually moved a little bit from its default position then we need to provide the style for the buttons so we need to directly selecting the button here and first we need to provide the width so width is going to be 60 pixel then you can see the width of the buttons are increased now then we need to provide the height of these particular buttons the style is going to apply to the all buttons because we are directly styling with the button name element which is the button tag and then we need to provide the margin property so margin from all side is going to be like 2 pixel then you can see margin from the buttons is actually increased and then we need to provide the font size property so the font size is going to be like a 16 pixel 16 pixel and then we need to provide here a border so the border is going to be like our 5 pixel and then we need to here use the cursor property so cursor is going to be pointer all right so now we need to provide here a border is going to instead of border we need to here specify the none and then to provide the border radius the border radius is going to be 5 pixel so now you can see the piano keys is actually styled properly next we need to provide the colors to white and black keys so for that we need to use here a white key this is a block of the white key and then we need to also provide here a black key and then we need to provide here a color first because once we specify the background color then it is actually not visible if i just save it then you can see so for the text is visible we need to provide the color which is like black or i can use here at least blue color okay and then for the white key we need to provide the another background color which is going to be at least blue so this is the code for the buttons so our next step is to start with the script part of the application because the styling of the application is done properly script part of the application we need to use the script.js file instead of that we need to create this function which is play sound function that is actually accepting a parameter 
So here first we need to use the function keyword function and then pasting the name of the function which is play sound and then instead of that we need to provide the parameter so it is actually going to be a note note means the particular note when we click on the button is going to play a note okay note means like a sound so we need to create here a variable which is where audio and then we need to here use the new operator and then again we need to use here audio means we need to create the object of the audio class audio and instead of that we need to provide the path of the sound folder and then we, after that we need to play the we are going to specify the part once we set the playing to this particular audio object which is audio variable au this is our audio variable and then we need to call the play function to play the audio and instead of this audio object we need to pass the folder name so this is actually our sounds folder sounds folder so it is by default looking at the same directory where the sounds folder exists and then we need to provide the forward slash and then we need to provide the plus operator to concatenate the things with the note which is the parameter because that has the string character plus note and then we need to concatenate it with the use of the dot mp3 which is the extension of the sound files right now you can see all the files have the dot mp3 extensions so that's marks the completion of the code for the javascript part of the project because it is very simple if i click on it then you can see the sound is actually playing if i click on every button that is will be a very like uh, irritating for you guys because it is going to record the sound in the 100 percent volume so that sound is going to be like very high so that is why i'm not going to click on the other buttons as well because right now i'm also wearing the headphone so the sound of this entire pc is actually like a hundred percent so it is very loud okay so that marks the completion of the code for the piano application so if you like this course then leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to increase the quality of my courses so thank you for watching so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to create the background color changer application so let me show you the application that we are going to build in this module so this is the application whenever i click on the web page so you can see it's actually going to change the color randomly so this is the application we are going to build in this particular module so the first step is we need to start with the html part of the project so you can see here i have already created the three files inside the visual studio code the first is index.html the second is the style.css the third is the script.js file and i have already launched the application inside my web browser so already i have linked the link tag which is the style sheet code and then also i link the script for the javascript code so the first thing is we need to specify a one container and then inside of that we need to place an one h1 element as you can see in the final version of the application so here first i am going to place a container and pressing the tab key and inside of that we are going to place one h1 element which is the background color changer okay so that is for the html part of this particular project it is a small application that we are going to build in this entire module so this particular application will teach you how you can change the body element color okay so the next step is we need to start with the css part of the project So to start with the CSS part of the project, we need to use the style.css file. So instead of that, first we need to reset the universal selector. So I'm going to change the margin to zero, which we have done in many of the application in this particular course. Then the padding, it is also going to be zero. And then I need to use the box sizing. So box sizing is going to border box. Once I did that, then you can see the default styling of the browser is actually changed. The default margin and padding is removed. Next, we need to select the body element. So we are going to use the body, and instead of that, I'm going to use the display to flex, and then the justify content is going to center. And after that, I need to use the align items to be center. Then this particular is actually at the center of the screen, and then we need to use here a height so that our text will actually appear at the hundred percent view height which is 100 vh if i say now you can see the text is actually at the center of the browser screen the next we need to provide the style sheet for the container so instead of that i'm going to use the font family 
you can apply the font family to body element as well but i am actually using here a uh, font family to this particular container so control save it then you can see now the font family is changed means the font of the container is changed because the h1 element is present inside the div container okay so now the font is actually changed then you can add a basic style to the h1 element this is just for the demonstration purpose this should be the first application of the course but i just actually want to build this to showcase you something because there is another application that we are going to build in this course so this particular project laid down the foundation means set up the basic part of the particular project that we are going to build in this module which will be the eighth or maybe the ninth project of this course okay so inside of the h1 element i am going to use the font size so you can increase the font size as per the needs i am going to use the 14 24 pixel to actually reset the default styling of the h1 element okay so you can now after setting the style of the background color you can change the color to this particular as well if you want but uh, i'm actually leaving it as it is so the next step is we need to start with the script part of the project which is the background color changer application so to work with the script part we need to use the script.js file and inside of the script.js file first we need to create a constant variable for the body because we want to change the color of the body so i am going to name the variable as body then we need to use the document which is a document container which is a dom document then we need to set the body and after that we need to create a listener to this body means we need to add the listener to this body so we want to handle the click listener so here i will be using the add event listener and instead of that i will be passing here a click listener click and then we need to pass here a function name or you can say that the callback so i'm going to here use the callback name which is change background color so this is a function we need to create so after terminating now it's time to create this particular function so this is going to be our change background color and starting the body of the function instead of that we need to create a one variable which is a random color we are again going to use the random function of the javascript to create the random color so either it is going to be const and then we need to use here a random color the variable name random color is equal to then here we need to create another function which is get random color okay so this function will actually be responsible for the creation of the random color so we need to create this function here again function and then use here a get random color actually i have named here a function wrong which is color and then remove this one again we get random color then starting the body of this particular function once we get the random color to this variable we need to set it to the html element so the html element is our body which we have created a variable at the top of the file so it is going to update the style and then we need to change the background color property so it is going to be like background color and then it is going to equal to random color the variable name that we have used here random color so this is a variable name we have used here now we need to generate the get random color this function will does what it's going to give us a hexadecimal code like a six digit hexadecimal code like fff zero c and d or one so this will be the hexadecimal code that will be used for the generation of the color so we are going to use only this way, way to actually change the color of the pattern even you can use the rgb function as well if you want to use or you can use a uh, colors name those color names can be put inside the array and then call it inside this particular get random color function which is another approach you can use it but i am actually using the hexadecimal way to change the background color whenever i click on the web page so for that we need to create here a variable which is like a const letters so this letters our extra it's going to be stored in a string variable now we have actually 16 hexadecimal 0 to 9 and then from where the two digit came out then it is going to be like a b c d e f so i'm going to copy the 16 characters because i'm not going to just simply pasting it here because i'm not going to type it to actually so i actually pasted here a code the reason i pasted here so that i can save a little bit of the time so after getting these 16 characters we need to generate a random color but we also need a variable which is let and this is actually going to hold a main color so this is going to store a string character because we need to proceed it with the hash character 
in front of these particular because these six characters are generated randomly by using this particular variable and we need to proceed it to with the use of this hash character we need to place this at the front of the string then it is actually a string so for traversing or you can say that if you want to randomly generate the character we need to use a for loop because it is actually a traversable because the index is starting from 0 and goes up to 15 so for that we need to use here a for loop so for not phone face it is actually a for loop then we need to start the body of the for loop inside of that we need to create a variable which is a counter variable so we are going to use here a let variable because the value of the counter is going to be changed many times then after that we need to provide here a terminator then i variable then we need to provide the condition and then we need to provide here a 6 and then we need to terminate it and then we need to increment the counter variable value now here i have specified the 6 that is because we need only 6 characters so here we have used here a 6 value the reason for that because the when you want to generate 6 random characters so that we can create a hexadecimal color notation so that we can change the background color if you use here a 5 then it's going to only generate the 5 random characters if you use here a 2 then it's going to change only the 2 random characters okay so this particular is used if you use here a 7 which is not required because the hexadecimal is only work for the 6 variables if you used here a 7 then it is not going to change the color okay right, now instead of that we need to provide the logic so the logic is like very simple we need to use here a color variable then the short syntaxing property which is the plus and equal to and then we need to assign it with the use of the letters so it is going to be have a letters and instead of that we need to generate a random index if I terminate it so instead of the array brackets we need to generate a random index so I am going to use here a math so math dot floor so floor is used to get a nearest possible whole number and then we need to use our math dot random function so math dot random so we need to multiply this random function with the value of the characters so we want to generate the values so we are actually multiplied with the 16 that is why i have specified here a 16 value because we want to generate a random number between 0 to 16 only so after that every time when this iteration runs it's going to generate a one random character and assign it to this correct color variable value already this color variable has a value of this hash character so it's going to actually store the hash character along with the new generated character so i'm going to use here a console log statement so that i can show you inside the log of the browser when we click on it on the web page so here i need to pass the variable which is the color so after doing this just we need to control save it now this function is going to return so we need to provide here a return because we are directly set setting the value inside this random color variable so we want to return something because we are not printing anything inside this particular get random color function so here we need to use the return keyword and what we want to return we want to return a color variable the values that have changed inside the color variable after saving it if i just completely come back to the web browser if i click it then you can see the color is now changing if i refresh it also i'm going to maximize the browser window if i click it then you can see color is changing so if i just show you the developer console by pressing the f12 key then you can see now this color is generated if i refresh the page if i click on the first time so that you can see first time it is actually generated by 3 and you can see the hash character is also stored with the newly generated character and we only start to store these six characters if i change the logic here like if i just use here a 3 and save it and if i just simply here like uh, click on it then you can see it's going to still change the color but only with the three characters still it's working but if i place here like uh, seven if i come back here and if i just here change this seven if i click it then you can see now the color is not changing because the hexa color decimal notation is only used and work with the six digits all right so again coming back to the this is the final application so here we need to change it to six and if i save it come back it and if i change it then you can see now the application is working fine so now the application is working fine that is for this particular project if you like this course then please leave a review because here you will definitely going to help me to increase the quality of the my courses and also the future courses so thank you for watching and i will see in the next lecture so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture welcome back to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to start creating the hex color generator application so let me show you the application that we are going to build in this particular module so you can see this is the application it has this rounded card and then we have this particular container in which you can see the color code of the hex is actually defined means this six digit hexa color is defined 
So if I click on this generate color button, then you can see it's actually randomly generating a new color that you can use inside your projects. So the concepts that I have taught you in the previous module, means the previous project, will be used inside this particular project. So make sure you complete the previous project means perfectly because I'm going to use the all logical stuff inside this particular hex color generator application. Inside of that, I'm going to quickly complete the code step by step rather than explaining the code in more detail. Okay, the first step is we need to start with the HTML part of this hex color generator application. So now you can see I have already created the HTML file inside the Visual Studio code for the HTML part of the hex color generator application. Also I have linked my style.css file and the script.js file. So you can see these are the files are also created for the project. And I have already added the boilerplate code inside this particular application and launched the application inside the web browser. So you can see. Now the first thing is we need to create the container for the application. So what I mean is if I show you the final application, this is a main container inside this particular h1 element, then this color container and then this button is placed. So we need to create first this container. So for that we need to use the container. So I'm going to here name the as container and I'm pressing the tab key. Instead of that first we need to provide the h1 element that is going to save the like hex color. So after specifying the color hex generator, now you can see if I control save it, then you can see the content is now visible inside the browser screen. Then we need to here add a color box container, which is this color box. This is one. So for that, we need to add here a class name, which is my color hyphen box. And then this is going to display the color. Inside of that, we need to place a span element which is a span tag and then we are going to display our default color which is hashtag 6 times f for the white color and this is going to have an id which is the color text so here we need to add the id name which is color text okay or i can use a camel case typing for the id name and then also we need to specify a id name to this color box so id and then the id is going to be like color box okay so this will be the color box and this will be the text will be appear inside this span element and after that we need to place the button so outside of this div tag we need to place here a button so when we click on the button we want to generate the color randomly so this button is going to have an id which is like generate generate btn and instead of that we need to display the text which is generate color so you can see now the span element and also the generate color button is appeared inside the web browser okay so that's it for this html part of the hex color generator so our next step is to start with the css part so for the css part of this hex color generator application we need to use the style.css file so inside of this style.css file first we need to add some code inside the body element so i'm going to select here a body inside of that and we'll be using here a display property which is going to be a flex you can even use a previous approach first you are going to you can just simply reset the default styling of the browser because in previous project we have to reset the universal selector which is the padding and margin right now this is actually a simple container appeared inside the center of the screen so that is the reason i am actually not uh, using the universal selector here so i have actually used a different approach it's totally up to you what particular approach you want to use so justify content and then here we need to add here a center and after that i will be using here a line items so line items is also going to be the center then you can see the content is actually appeared inside the center of the screen then here we'll be using the background color so background color is going to like hashtag f2 f2 and f2 if i control save it then you can see the nice grayish color in the background of the the page and then we need to use the font size so font size i will be using a not a font size it's actually a font family so font family i will be using here a uh, arial font which is this one if i control save it so now you can see the font is actually changed okay so that is for the body element now the next step is we need to provide the code for the container and then inside of that we need to add the text align property so text align is going to be the center of the screen so you can see now the text all of the elements is now at the center of the container and then i will be adding the background color to the container so background color is going to be like white 
So you can see now the bright color is applied to the container. Next, we need to add the padding. So padding is not auto, it is going to be like padding. From all side, it's going to be 30 pixel. Then you can see the inner padding of the container is actually increased. Then you need to add the box shadow property. So it is going to be like 0 pixel, then 0 pixel, and then the blurness is going to be like 20 pixel. And then we need to provide here a RGBA function which is going to be like 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.2 the control save then you can see there is a box shadow in the container is appeared and then we need to add the border radius so border radius is from all sides going to be like 10 pixel you can see it's actually now working one important property other I want to give inside the body is the height property so height is going to be like 100 bh now you can see the container is at the center of the screen. So the next step is to start with the styling the container. Okay, so for that again here we need to use the color box container, which is the color box. Provide the width and height. So width is going to be like 300 pixel. And then we need to provide the height. So height is going to be like 150 pixel. Then you can see the is height is also increased and then we need to add here a background color so background color by default i want to add here ff that will be displayed once we load the page so by default it's going to show the color okay so now we need to also set this text to be appeared at the center of the container which is a color box container right now then we need to add the border radius property it is going to 8 pixel and after that we need to add the margin property so margin from top and bottom is going to be like 20 pixel and from left and right it is going to auto and after that we need to add the font so font is going to like font weight i will be using here a bolder one you can see the font is weight is increased then we need to add the display property flex so flex and then we need to add a justify content which is going to be the center and then i will be adding here a line items which is at the center okay so that's for the display property now the text is actually appeared at the center of the screen then we need to add a, another property which is the box shadow to this color box container so box shadow like if i just simply copy this box shadow to save a little bit of the time box shadow because our box shadow is already same just only the blurness is going to be like 6 pixel and this property is 3 pixel node 3 bba it is 3 pixel and it is going to be like 0 0.1 if i save it then you can see there is a nice box shadow appeared to the color box container as well so the next step is we need to change the style for this color text so we have applied an only one selector which is the id selector so here we will be using the color so this is the color text and instead of that i will be first using the font size to 24 pixel okay now you can see the font size is actually increased and then we need to add the other property which is the color property so i'm going to just change the color to little lighter than the black color okay and after that we need to add the code for the button so this is our button and then we have another code which is like button button then we need to use the hover state of the button as well okay so this one has going to have background color like hashtag if i save it and you can see the color of the button is changed in the hover state then we need to change the default style of the button so the first we need to change the background color so background color is going to like hashtag three times three then we need to add the color so color is going to like ff f, f, and this will be the color then we need to add the border so border is going to be like none and then we need to add the border radius property so border radius is going to 4 pixel and after that we need to add the padding property so padding is going to 10 pixel from top and bottom and from left and right it is going to 20 pixel all right and after that we need to increase the font size font size is going to 16 pixel and then also we need to change the cursor to pointer and then there should be a transition for the background color background and it is going to be color and it is going to be 0.3s 
it is actually is if i save it and i can see now the color of the button change when we hover over it with the nice little transition okay so that is for the css part of the hex color generator application so our next step is to start with the javascript part so for the javascript part we need to use the script.js file and inside of the script.js file first we need to get the reference to this particular button which is this id and then we also need to get the reference to this particular text and also the color box so we need to get the reference to three elements which is the color box color text and this particular button so at the top i am going to write here a const generate btn and then we are going to use the get not get it is document dot get element by id and then here we need to specify the id name one thing is notice here i am not using the query selector i am actually using the get element by id so i just only need to copy the id name if we are using the get query selector means document dot query selector then you need to also place the hash symbol as well so this is now the button id is fetched similarly we need to fetch the id of the other two elements which is the color box and the color text so it is like color box and this is our color text and then we need to provide the corresponding id so this is actually a color box so this is color box and then again come back to the color text so this is the color text and then we need to provide here a color text then we need to add a listener to this particular generate button so for that we need to actually use here a generate btn dot add event listener so we want to handle the click listener so here we need to provide the click and after that we need to call here a function so which is like update color okay so we need to create this update color function so update color function also we need to provide the function keyword so instead of this it is actually going to responsible for the updation of the color all right and then we need to actually cut these two lines of the code from here and paste it inside the function because we don't want to use it globally okay and then removing the extra spaces here and then here this particular function is responsible for the generation of the color so the first thing is we need to create uh, another function which is like our uh, if i just say at the top here if i just create it like it doesn't matter if you created the function at the bottom if you are uh, not using the taking care of the scopes of the functions so here i will be using the generate random color so the function that we have created in the previous project so i already told you so if i just completely go back and here if i come back to color to click to change color bg so here i have created this particular generate random color so this is a function i have used so here this is because the it is also a hex color generator application to use the same code so i'm going to copy this function from here collapsing it and also closing this file from here and coming back to the script.js which is the hex color script.js and at the top i'm going to paste this function code here that is why in the beginning of the video i told you to first develop the background color changer application then come back to this hex color code generator application because it is going to use the same concept that i told you in the previous lecture or i can say that the previous module so you can see it has the same code just we have created the constant letters which is the 16 constants now we can say that there are the 16 characters that are used for the generation of the hex color code then we are using the color variable to store the hash character and this particular loop is used to actually generate these six random characters that will be assigned to this color variable along with these particular hash character and then it's going to return a color variable now we need to use this function inside this update color function and then instead of that i need to create a variable which is of type const then random color is equal to get random color function that we have already created and after that we need to change the color of this particular box which is the color box so we need to set the value means we need to call here a color box dot style so we are going to style the 
color box by using the javascript properties so we want to change the background color so here we are actually going to use the background color property and then we need to assign the random color variable value which is this particular one after that we also need to actually set the text as well so here we need to call the color text dot txt content it is a span element so it has a txt content property which is a text content is equal to and after that we need to provide here a random color because a random color has a six character value along with the hash symbol okay so we have set the listener to the button if we save the code and if i click on this generate random color button then you can see the color of the color box is now changed and also the text is also updating which indicating the name of this particular color which which actually giving you the hex code of this particular color so if it is like this particular grayish color then you have this particular hash code you need to use for the generation of the color okay so that's marks the completion of the code for this hex color generator application so if you like this entire course then please leave a review okay so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you so this is the final application that we are going to build which is a vowel counter application so when we enter our text here like uh, hello and if i click on this count vowels then you can see it has two vowels that is e and o and if i enter a multi-line text this is a uh, text and if i enter again means click on this button so you can see it has three vowels which is i i and e so this is the application that we are going to build. This particular is actually a Grammarly plugin that I use for the text auto correction purpose. So ignore this one. So we are going to develop this one. So first you need to open your Visual Studio. I have already done that. And here I will be going to create a new folder. And inside I am just going to click on day one and project, which is going to be our vowel calculator. Or I can say that vowel counter, which is a more meaningful name and this is going to be day one and i also want to preserve it with one means adding a one so this will be the naming that i will be using which is vowel counter and i'm going to press the enter and inside of that we need to create a new file which is index.html then we need to create a style.css file for the styling of the app and then i'm going to create the app.js you can name it script.js as well then the boilerplate code which is and pressing the enter and i'm also going to increase the zoom so that you can see it more clearly like now this is the perfect zoom and here i'm going to rename the title as vowel counter okay and that's it i think i need to link it with the css tag which is wrap tag so i'm going to name it as style.css and then we need to specify the script tag as well so this is a script tag as rc and here i'm going to type the app.js so everything is done it's time to actually see whether the things are working perfectly so first i'm going to type the hello so hello not hickey as hello and now i'm going to leave launch the application so see that whether it's actually launched or not so you can see hello is actually printed this is the application that we are going to develop and this is the main in which i am going to teach you the step by step code procedure so i am going to just simply minimize it and here actually first we have to add some html elements so first i am going to remove this hello world hedging tag and then here first i am going to create a div tag and inside of this we are going to add the other elements of the html so the first element is actually we need a h1 and it's going to have the heading of the vowel counter so this is a counter hour and then the main input type which is a text area we are going to use it and it's going to have the name so we are going to remove the name and columns and rows these are actually not required because i'm going to remove it and also i'm going to remove this one also i'm going to click on there so that you can see things more clearly so here is a text area and inside of this id i will be adding an input text which is a id i'm going to specify and then i need to provide the placeholder text which is enter your text okay so now finally done and then we need to specify the button so the button is actually 
we're going to provide it here uh, on click event so we have to provide the on click and inside of this on click we need to call a function but we are going to specify it after some time first we need to type it here a text of the button which is count vowels okay and then after that for displaying the result which is this result total vowels for that we need to add a paragraph element so i'm going to add p tag and inside of this we have to specify id equal to and we are going to specify the result as a id all right so this is what we have done so far so let me see whether it's actually working or not let me see the output of this one definitely it's going to work because html doesn't give so much error okay so i'm going to click on this port disposing and then i'm again going to click on this live so this is the final app you can see bubble counter we have our text area and we have our button and yes this is all three elements where is the paragraph type because right now inside the paragraph we have enter nothing you can see here inside the paragraph we have entered nothing so i'm just going to add para or i can say that the result to see whether it's also exist save it and you can see here is our paragraph okay so now it's time for the css part so first i'm going to target the div tag so div because there is only one div so i'm directly using the selector which is a tag name selector and if you have multiple divs then definitely you need to use a class selector right now it has only one div and inside of this we have these four elements so that is why i'm directly styling with the div tag so first thing i need to provide a nice background color so this is our background color and it's going to like uh, i'm actually going with the default one which is golden road so this is the color we have going to use then we need to specify a box shadow it's going to like two pixel this styling is just a very simple styling you can modify it into very greater one if you want then i'm going to specify the color which is 1313 which is just for a uh, black a little bit of black box shadow then max width so that we can center the layout means that our dip should be in the center side and then when you specify the border radius so border radius is going to be 10 pixel so that we get some little round edges of the border and then we have to specify the margin so margin is going to zero and then we need to specify the auto then it will be displayed inside the center of the screen then we need to specify the height so height is going to be like 300 pixels otherwise it is going to be very look like very small then i'm going to specify the padding as well so which is going to be like 20 pixels or i can specify that 2 pixel for the first time so let's see how it's actually working so you can see this is our final product and right now you can see this is our div almost looks like the same so now it's time to style this our text area okay so coming back to the html part means the css part we use the studio code so first i'm going to specify the h1 tag right now this right now we have only one h1 tag so i'm going to directly specify the code for this one h1 tag and here i'm going to specify the color so color is going to be like hashtag 333 and for the gray and then we need to specify the font size so font size i'm going to specify 32 pixel and after that we need to specify the styling for the text area we have a single element text area so i can do that by with the name of the tag width so width is going to be like 300 pixel just need to specify the width smaller than the main container which is a div so if it has 500 pixel then need to specify 300 if you specify like more than this 500 pixel then it's go actually out of the boundary of the div tag so that is why we need to specify a small value here inside the text area and then the height so height is also i'm going to specify 100 pixel or you can specify 100 one if you actually want, want a round figure then margin so margin from top is going to be like 10 pixel and the rest of them is going to be auto and after that i'm going to specify the display property display and here i'm going to use it as a block element so if i not use a block right now you can see if i just simply save it and just go to then you can see both of these two elements are coming one after the other because this is actually an nota block element 
okay so we need to convert it into block so that is the reason we need to specify here uh, display oh whatever is display is going to be like block and once i did that you can see now they are coming one after the other in a form of row like structure so it's actually occupying the whole width of the container okay and after that just make the indentation properly then font size so the font size is going to be like 24 pixel the content this font size is for the content inside this particular text area okay and then we need to specify the padding so padding is going to be like 10 pixel so right now you can see it's actually this is a padding between the edge and the placeholder text so if i increase the padding to like uh, like 100 then you can see the very different result uh, where is you can see it's actually not looking good i will say just i'm experimenting with the code a little bit so if you want to make changes then this is the necessary things you can do then border radius so it's actually having like 5 pixel border radius now let's see how that it looks like so it looks like great okay now the padding is actually not looking good for this one i think the h1 element okay so there is a one property i think when there is one property is missing and the font and the text align property so if i use actually inside the div i can do that one more thing or i can just use the body tag here inside the body i'm going to use a font family which i forgot at the beginning font family and i'm going to use a arial and inside of this i'm going to use a sans serif okay and then i want text to be aligned at center so if i do that now you can see it's actually appearing at the center and now it's looking a little bit more bold the next thing is we need to actually specify the style inside this count variable so coming back to our ps code and here now it's time to specify the button so we are going to specify the first padding so padding is going to be like 10 pixel and then i need to specify the 20 pixels okay and then i'm going to specify the background color so background color is going to be hashtag 333 and after that i'm going to use color so that it gives us a nice white color then the border is going to be none and then here I'm going to use a font weight so that it's looking a little bit bold. I'm going to use a 700, not 7000, 700. And then I'm going to specify the border radius. I'm going to be 5 pixel. All right. Then I need to specify the hover class as well, the pseudo element. So instead of that, I will be using that hover. After that, so all properties will remain same. I'm going to remove the padding because i don't want to change the padding and the thing that i want to change is just the color and the only background color i want to change so i'm going to give it a little bit of blue this one and the rest of things i'm going to remove it because i just want to change the background color save it and see the output you can see and the one more thing which is a cursor property so i'm going to call it as cursor which is cursor pointer that's what i want to do the next thing is for the result so we have specified the id so i'm going to use the here result like this our id name actually where is the id name so i'm going to use this result so it's id that is why we need to specify the hashtag which is an id selector not a hashtag it's like a hash character so font size is actually like 20 pixel and i'm going to specify the margin top property is going to be like a 20 pixel i can just 20 and then i can provide the font weight to be like 500 save it and you can see the result okay so it's having like a little bit so what we can do margin from top and font weight so we can do it as font size is going to be 20 pixel and weight is going to be like 400 so that it will be inside this margin top i'm going to remove the margin top to make me change the margin top to 15 pixel now it's look great okay 
So I think it's prepared and just make it as 700 so that it looks a little bit more bold and crisp. So this is the design part is also done. It's time for the JavaScript part. So we need to call a function here which is uh, inside this element. So inside of this on click button we need to call a function. So the name of our function is going to be like count vowels and then to specify the brackets okay so this function we need to define inside this app.js file all right so here i will be typing the function and inside this i'm going to call as count vowels and name the function and then the start its block okay so and then i need another function which is to check whether it's vowel or not so it's vowel and then the body of this function and then the this body is the block and inside of this bracket so the function i'm going to specify a care and then i will be using the vowels which is a where so i'm using a where here vowels and then i'm going to specify the array specify the semicolon so inside of this array i'm going to write the vowels that is used a e i o u and then i will be entire okay so inside this and then the last one is u and after that we need to return this value return and here i will be specify the vowels dot include and inside of this includes we need to specify the care so our next step is to specify the code inside this count vowels function. So first we need to get the ID of this particular element. So I'm going to change the actually ID name here because right now it's in put text which is all in small case. So I'm going to actually make it into camel case typing input text and I'm just going to copy it and coming inside the app.js file. So here first I'm going to create a var variable of text and here I'm going to type it here document.get element by id then starting the bracket and inside of the double quotes i'm going to paste the input text so we are going to get the value so here i need to specify the dot value what actually is done is shortcut keys from the vs code it's actually a value then we just specify this semicolon okay and then save it then there is another variable which we need which is a vowel count we need a vowel count variable and vowel count is equal to zero because at the end it is actually a vowel count replication so we need this vowel count variable and after that we need to convert the text into lowercase because all the elements of the vowel are is actually in small case you can see a e i u and you know that the javascript is a case sensitive language so if we type the text in a uppercase like this you can see so it's actually going to give us a problem so that is why we have to here actually specify the code means convert it into smaller case so i'm going to write it here text is equal to text dot to lower case so lower case and then we need to terminate this code which is necessary if we don't specify in javascript then it's better practice to specify and after that we need to specify the for loop so for and here i need to first complete the body of the for loop so first we need to specify a counter for this for loop which is started from the zero because this entire content whatever we type inside this text area will become an array so that is why we are going to traverse means looping through that particular string Bingo or a string is actually a collection of characters which is which traversable which is actually an array you can treat it as an array if you know the fundamentals of the programming so that is why i just say you in the beginning of the course you need some experience in javascript otherwise this course will become a little bit difficult to follow along then here we need to run the loop according to the length of the array means lay length of the string okay i can change means use these terms interchangeably which is text dot length okay make sure you didn't make any typo while typing the name of these properties 
and then we need to increment the counter all right so that is for the conditional part of the for loop and inside of this for loop we need to create a, another variable so which is a var variable and then we need to use here a char is equal to text dot char at function char at function and you can see we need to specify here a counter variable i so we are actually using the text char at i so if there is a character present whatever character will be present every time we are going to compare it and initialize into this variable links we are actually traversing the entire string that we are getting from the input text and then we are saving that character by character inside this variable okay and then after using this we need to use this care means this pass this care as a parameter to this is vowel function so to do that we have to here use an if condition if is vowel then we will be pass the means we are going to pass every character to this is vowel function if there is a match then we are going to increment the value of this count variable okay so i hope this will clear a little bit logic part of this particular project so here i will be passing the care okay so now the care is passed then we need to start the body of this particular if block and inside of this we need to increment the count variable which is a vowel count plus plus so if there is every time if is vowel means suppose we just take this example as an input text character uh, although it is an id name but still take it as an input or i can just use a comment here like if we type it here hello so first when the first time this particular code runs it's actually going to pass the h to this variable and how because the condition is zero so this h is actually present at the zeroth condition means the zeroth index not condition at the zeroth index so this will be passed to this variable and the length of this entire loop is going to be four zero to four is going to run it because the indexing is started from zero okay and then h will be passed to this function by using this condition is vowel and then if it is a match then it's going to increment the value of the counter which will be only appear in case of e and o you can just simply try run this application by putting a one one value and just try run it into your notebook means your pen and paper and just try to run it you will be get complete idea how this code is working so i think we get the value from this vowel count now we need to update the ui because right now if we run this application we are not getting any output in our project we need to update the result variable so to do that we have to write a couple of more lines of code so after the end of this loop you can see i am actually at the outside of the loop so here inside of this we are going to create a, another variable which is a result variable where result is equal to document dot get element by id and inside of this again we need to specify the code inside the brackets so i'm going to inside the html part of the code so i'm going to copy it coming back to the app.js and here i will be paste the result id so now our variable is created and after that we need to update this result variable so i'm going to type it here result dot text content so we're going to use this property text content is equal to so total vowels we're going to update this result to total vowels and specify the colon then we need to concatenate with the plus so i'm going to use a plus symbol and then we need to specify our vowel count variable which is this variable and then specify the terminator operator so that's marks the end of the code for this count vowel function if i save it and if i go back to my browser and here i will be typing here hello and simply click on count then you can see it's having a two vowels the result is actually printed so if i type it here a long text hello my name is vichay so if i just simply click on count vowel then you can say we have seven so let me check this is a vowel one two three four 
five, six, and we have seven vowels. Okay, so leave a review. So, are you leaving a review or not? Please leave a review because it will definitely have to grow my course. If I click on here count vowels, then you can say we have nine. So again, we are going to check E and A is actually having two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have total here nine vowels. So our project is working perfectly fine. So that marks the completion of this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and thank you for watching.